Talladega Super Speedway is NASCAR's fastest racetrack. And there are few words that describe the excitement and the close racing that occurs at over 190 miles an hour. A year ago, a crash occurred that left an indelible mark on the minds of race fans and drivers alike. It involved 22 cars in all. It resulted in injury to Kyle Petty, kept him sidelined for 11 races, and criticism toward Ernie Irvin. Too many people racing too close together, and you know it's this early in the race, that's stupid. That accident shouldn't have happened, but, but it did. Being impatient. Uh, that causes more wrecks than anything else. People saying, well, you shouldn't be passing at this time of the race. That's baloney. I think what's happened here is, is that Ernie has got the reputation for causing wrecks. He's sort of got that stigma now, and if, if he's on the same straightaway, he's, it's his fault. And now, anytime he's even close to a wreck or a wreck happens, then everybody, including the people in the garage area and the people in the fans, start pointing at Ernie. At the time, I really didn't understand what had happened. I went home and watched it on the film. Hey, I, I was the one that prevented that wreck. I'm an aggressive race car driver, and, uh, you know, that's the sort of things that's made in NASCAR Winston Cup racing so great. Ernie returns to Talladega in 1992 with a renewed acceptance from drivers and the pole position for today's Winston 500. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Today, live from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, it's the Winston 500. And skies were threatening earlier today, but right now we have sunshine, partly cloudy weather. It is nice and warm and humid. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to the Winston 500 in Talladega, stop number nine on the Winston Cup Tour for 1992. Now, let's take a look at the quest for the Cup standings as we enter this event. Davey Allison last week and Harry Gant were separated by 86 points. This week, the top five are separated by 83 points. It's the closest points battle in over a decade after eight races. And there you can see the six through ten place standings, including the defending Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt. Now, Davey Allison starts second in today's race. And not only that, he won an IROC event here yesterday, and that made him the winningest driver in Talladega history. Now about Terry Labonte. He comes in here third in points. He's driving the third different make of car so far in 1992. It's the same car he drove at Daytona, but for today, he has Ford skin on it. And there's another guy you can't count out. He's the defending champion of this race, and for more on that, here's Ned and Benny. Bob, you can never count Harry Gant out, regardless of where he's running in the pack. Remember a year ago when he won the Winston 500 here at Talladega? He was not much of a factor during the race, but at the end, when it really counted, good gas mileage and a drafting partner, Rick Mast, helped him to pull off the victory, Benny. Maybe not in an exciting manner, but nevertheless, he got the big dollars. Not as exciting that Talladega uses as this racetrack is known for excitement. Pats. 30 cars, nose to tail, side by side at 195 miles per hour. That's what we're going to see today. It is exciting, folks, so hang on. And one guy who probably will be lending most of the excitement at the beginning of the race is Mark Martin. He's back in 21st spot. And he's back in 21st spot because his qualifying speed on the first day of qualifying was disallowed by NASCAR because his car was too low. Well, Harry Gant had a similar problem at Daytona, but he was only qualifying for a qualifying race. Here, Mark Martin had to re-qualify on the second day, so he is back in 21st place. Now, he's going to have to have some help to get up to the front, and that will be in the way of drafting. He'll have to find himself a drafting partner. Well, for more on that, let's go to the pits and Jerry Punch. Thank you, Ned. Drafting is the key to being successful here at the high banks of Talladega Super Speedway. Now, drafting means you've got to have a partner, a dance partner, almost like a shadow, so that when you come down pit road, they come down pit road. When you go up high to pass, they go up high to pass. It's almost like someone's following you, mimicking your every move. No matter where you go all week long, to cut a hole in that wind, you've got to have a shadow, a drafting partner, a dance partner. However, right here, guys, no drafting inside. All yours, John. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Well, as we said earlier, Ernie Urban does have a lot to prove today here at Talladega, and he is sitting on the pole. He, along with Ricky Rudd, who's starting in the fourth position, I believe, are going to have a lot to say about, well, my drafting partner is back right now, a lot to say as to whether Ford's winning streak continues. Bob? And, John, that Ford win streak is now at 12, eight consecutive this year, and the last four NASCAR Winston Cup races of 1991. The Winston 500 start is just moments away. 
Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by GMC Trucks, the strength of experience. And by Valvoline, people who know use Valvoline. And we'll check the 40 car starting lineup for you as we get set for all out competition on the fastest speedway in a moment. miles an hour on pit road on pit road we heard that Beatty say the pace car is going to speed up and run 80 down through the dry oval that, that's supposed to be the same as 70 on pit road yes. they checked it out <clears throat> so stop watches so Richter's up in the press box is that yeah where he can see down on pit road I got you. and Beatty's down here somewhere yeah he's right over there in one of those tires Halfway challenges coming up in today's race. A driver leading at the halfway lap will win $10,000, and a fan at home will have a chance to win a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina Z34. If you have the correct UPC code from a Gillette product, such as Right Guard or Center, you could win an instant prize. To enter, call 1 900 436 before the halfway lap. It'll cost you 95 cents, and you have to be 18. If your entry is selected, you and home are called, and you can name the driver who won at the halfway point. You'll win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Here now is the diehard starting lineup. On the pole is Ernie Urban in the Kodak film Chevrolet. Outside row number one is Davey Allison. The second row consists of Sterling Marlin from Columbia, Tennessee, and Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia. Third row is Bill Elliott, and alongside will be Morgan Shepard. Going to the fourth row, it's Terry Labonte, and outside, Brett Bodine. The fifth row, Kyle Petty on the inside and Dale Earnhardt on the outside. And the rest of the starting lineup now as we are just about set to go green for 188 laps of racing in the Winston 500. It's a beautiful day now. It was very threatening early this morning. As a matter of fact, the Weather Bureau is still calling for about a 50% chance of rain. But right now, we are in very good shape weather-wise and anticipating some excellent, exciting racing here at Talladega. And you can see there are some drivers far back in the field that's going to give us some of that excitement, Bob. How about that Darrell Walter, the pole winner last week at Martinsville back in third, was it 33rd spot? And look at the huge crowd on hand here at Talladega as we get set for racing. The pace car has pulled off. The field comes down, anticipating a green flag. Ernie Irvin is on the pole with Davey Allison alongside, then Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd. We're looking for green for the Winston 500. Here it is. We're racing. Didn't take Michael Walter long to fall out just as soon as he crossed the start finish line. He fell to the inside. But going to the front is outside front row center Davey Allison leading Ernie Irvin as they come down the front stretch. And there is Michael Walter. He got caught on the inside, just don't have a drafting partner, can't go to the front. There's Sterling Marlin. He's got Bill Elliott, teammates bumper to bumper, trying to get by Rudd on the outside. That outside group, though, here at Talladega is normally the best. You can keep the RPMs of the engine up a little higher, get a better run off the turns. lap 
number one. Right behind him is Ernie Irvin. Then the battle for third between Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd as we have the perspective of Morgan Shepard as that's Rudd and Marlin right in front of him. These cars are three of best. There's Earnhardt right behind the 11 and 20 numbers. Earnhardt in the middle of cars three abreast. Everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, four abreast down the back stretch. Here comes Kyle Petty. And Mark dump. Martin. Mark Martin is there on the inside. He has picked up several spots here in the early going. He started 21st, but is moving up quickly. And Earnhardt comes up to challenge also. Wow, look at those cars. Three abreast. Is that Stanley Smith in the middle of that mess? Wow, you talk about crowded on the freeway. But Dick Beatty told them in the driver's meeting, gentlemen, there's got to be a lot of give and take. Well, that was on Ted Musgrave track. in the middle of that. The car that I was speaking of was Ted Musgrave. Still three abreast racing for position. There is Earnhardt going past Ricky Rudd and setting his sights on Sterling Marlin. Earnhardt has got fourth place. Well, I'll tell you, it's a miracle that we've gotten through those laps of the way they've been uh, jockeying around and running three and four abreast. Look out, Bill Elliott goes by along Brett Bodine, tries to follow him, and goes right by Earnhardt. And Terry Labonte in the four, the Sunoco four, number 94, also involved in this tremendous battle for position. Morgan Shepard up high in the Wood Brothers set go forward. He's making a move towards the front on the high side. And Harry Gant is in big trouble. The defending champion of this race has dropped back to near the tail of the field. Well, remember last year, he was absolutely at the tail of the field until they made their last pit stop, or at least his last pit stop. And yeah. another driver who is well off the mark, in fact, behind Harry Gant, is Daryl Waltrip. Look at those cars from off this corner. Now, folks, I'm telling you, they're running 190 miles an hour. There's Dale Jarrett on the inside. Yes. Interstate car. Let's see if that was going to be a smart move. He went to the inside. He moved up to six from his 15th starting position, but it's going to be tough for him to pass down there. In fact, I think that was a mistake that he pulled down there. He passed Earnhardt on the outside. Let's go to John Kernan, who can tell us about Harry Gann. Bob, I just talked to Andy Petrie, the crew chief. He says, I don't know. He says, Harry hasn't said anything, but we do know that that is a brand new race car. They've been having some problems, as well as Daryl Walter, who is also in a car that they wrecked earlier this year. They had to change some of those things. Jeff Hammond said that had been one of the most frustrating moments that he has ever experienced in his racing career. But on Friday, Harry's team tried one of Ernie Irvin's engine. It picked up some speed for them, but they decided to take that engine out. And right now, Andy Petrie is kind of shrugging his shoulders, doesn't know what's going on. Let's go down pit road to Jerry Punt. John, I spoke with Harry again just before the green flag began. He said, he said, Doc, we're going nowhere. This is what happens when you build a brand new race car and you're so busy you don't have time to test and you don't have time to go to the wind tunnel. It's a big battle up front for the lead. They are challenging up front. Harry Gant still dropping back in. Darrell Waltrip also struggling, having any trouble. Allison leads, and Ernie Irvin is in the hunt. Seven cars are in the lead draft, led by Davey Allison. Irvin is second, followed by Sterling Marlin, then Ricky Rudd, Morgan Shepard, Wally Dollenbach, and Dale Earnhardt. Got to give a call to Wally Dollenbach, the rookie this year on the NASCAR circuit. Came from road racing. So far today, looks like he's had by far the best one he's had all year. He's the fifth car in line there as the freight train forms down the 4,000-foot backstretch. So we talk about how drafting can work for you or against you. We mentioned Dale Jarrett there a moment ago. He was up to sixth place. He tried to pass Morgan Shepard on the inside. Now he's about 25th. And that goes to prove you prove, as Jerry Punch told us, you've got to have a drafting partner. Don't get out of line without first making three arrangements or at least believing that somebody is going to go with you. And evidently Ernie Irvin <laughs> thinks somebody was going to go with him. Maybe he doesn't need them, but I think he will. We'll see if that's a mistake. He pulled out of second position to go low on Davey Allison. Will those on the high side of the racetrack go around him, or will Ernie be able to maintain his position? It looks as if he's going to lose the spots as to the back he goes. Davey Allison is first, and now Sterling Marlin is running in second position as we're in the early laps of the Winston 500 from Talladega. Stay with us.
Shepard and Wally Dollenbach doing a great job as you indicated Benny he's running in fifth spot right now in that Keystone sponsored car prepared by Jack Rouse. If someone told him that he needed a dancing partner he's picked Morgan Shepard. Wherever Morgan goes he's going to go. And just as we went through the break we saw Ernie Irvin trying to make a move down on the inside. He is back in sixth place. Those five lead draft cars have pulled away from him. Really and you see we can't even see Ernie behind Wally Dollenbach so he has lost the lead draft because he tried to make that pass. But he and Earnhardt are hooked up together now. They might be able to work together and get back up there. They're the top five, and they're nose to tail as they go down the back stretch. We have four Fords and one Chevrolet right in the middle. That Chevrolet is Ricky Rudd running in third place in the tie. Mark Martin has been doing a great job. He was the one who had his qualification run nullified on Thursday, and now Mark Martin, after starting in 21st position, has worked his way up to 14th. 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th of Rusty Wallace would be the ninth place car. There's six, seven, eight, that group of three cars, Irvin, Earnhardt, and Bill here's Elliott. a lead change as Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd have teamed up, and they're going to throw Davey Allison back, or are they? And look, making a three abreast is Morgan Shepard. Now, Darlin Bach says, I was supposed to be following that 21 car. Oh, well, they're not doing that. Nope, got set off there a little bit. Now, Rudd's going to try to come back up on the outside. That's going to allow Marlin to pull away a little bit while these other four cars race side by side back there. So Davey Allison goes from the lead back to fifth position in about a half a lap. And fellas, every time Sterling Marlin in this Maxwell House Ford leads a lap $100 goes to the Miracle Children's Network. So they just want, they just got $100. Compliments of the Maxwell House people. Morgan Shepard and Ricky Rudd are running side by side for second spot. Look at Earnhardt on the outside of Dahlenbach. Oh boy. So Earnhardt and Irvin did hook up together and caught that crowd. And Jerry Punch has Steve Lloyd in the pit area. And they are all smiles here in the Wally Dollarback crew. And Steve Lloyd, the crew chief. Steve, you, you've got to be impressed with how well this young driver, only having run a few laps in his life here, running so well on the old Wally Dollarback. Yeah, that's the same car we had in Daytona, and it was awful fast before he got the wreck. And we had to run on the backup car, but the guys did a good job. Put this car back together just like we had it in Daytona, and uh, we were awful good yesterday in practice. And, We'll just see what we got. He's hung out the dry right now, dropping out of the ground. And even though you might have a good race car, sometimes experience can hurt you, or I should say inexperience. So he's lost about eight or nine, maybe ten spots uh, getting out of the draft, and that'll bite you here at Talladega, guys. Boy, it sure can, and that's a perfect example of drafting. If you don't have anybody to go with you, you get hung out either at the bottom or at the top, you go back. And that's exactly what Wally Dallenbach is doing right now. He's trying to get in line desperately. But there's no place to get in line. He Bob. tried to get in beside Jimmy Hensley, but Hensley said, uh-uh, buddy. You ain't getting in this spot. Brad Bud said, uh-uh. See, there's just no spot to get in there. So. Now there's yeah. a fellow Ford driver, Brett Bodine, just ahead of him, but I don't think yeah. he can squeeze. Yeah, he is. He's going to squeeze in between Brett That's Bodine true. and Hudson Clinton. Some spotter up on the roof said, okay, you can't come up. You can't come up. He told him he could come up. There's no one on the outside of him. And the bumper cam on Jimmy Hensley's car looking back at Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Ford. <laughs> we 
Meanwhile, Harry Gant just continues to struggle. Jerry, have you found out any more about his problem? Bob, we really haven't. We talked about the fact that the body this is not right to run at these speeds here, but you kind of realize these drivers don't lose their sense of humor even at close to 200 miles per hour. A minute ago, the crew radio again said, you, you better hustle, Harry, you're losing the draft. He chuckled back on the radio and said, what draft? I've never been in it. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He got out of it at the very beginning and went straight to the back. I was, I wonder if there's something wrong with uh, the car number four of Ernie Irvin. He got down on the inside. I'm not sure that he, now he's back up in the line, but boy, he's dropped about six or eight positions as well. Can't even see him in this lead pack. Now Morgan Shepard's yep. down there out of the draft, so maybe it was just getting out of the draft for Ernie Irvin. Well, our innovation here on ESPN Speed World coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, our Napa Field Summary, the first of the afternoon. We show you the entire field rundown as it stands right now. Not five, ten laps ago. This is current information. Yeah, maybe the last lap because positions are being changed, of course, on the racetrack, but this is the way they were running when they came down the last lap. It's still Sterling Marlin leading, but Ricky Rudd now is running second, and Earnhardt heads to the high side, and Davey Allison will also. Yeah, I think he figures that Davey, I know he's huge helping up there, and I think Earnhardt figures he will help him. If he, he gets the shot up there on the outside, but now they drop back to mine. I think you're right, and I think all these guys are going to try to pass on the outside all day. They've seen your Earnhardt looks on the inside. He wants Rudd to go with him. No, I guess well, he's, he's got to get Rudd himself. Yeah. And he runs in there and slides right up in front. He makes himself a hole and fills it. One car out of the race already. Number 53 car. Great action on the racetrack as Dale Earnhardt has now moved the GM Goodrich Chevrolet to second position. And another driver struggling here in the early going is Daryl Waltrip as he has dropped back on the pack. And John Kernan has the report on DW. Right now, Bob DW is just trying to hang on. Talk with Jeff Hammond just a minute ago. He shrugged his shoulders and said, the car just will not go. He's at least a half a lap behind right now. Jeff says that what they got to do is try to hang on to this draft with Jimmy Means and Dave Marcus, but Daryl's having almost a problem to do that. They're hoping maybe they can do something during the first round of pit stops to make a uh, change on that, and hopefully we'll pick up a little bit more speed. Bob? Dale Earnhardt running in second position. Sterling Marlin, by the way, is leading an NASCAR Winston Cup race for the first time since Daytona. Davey Allison, the Daytona 500 winner, is running in third position. And we have got some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel and nose-to-tail racing here at Talladega. We have completed 16 laps of the 188 that will make up the Winston 500. Glad to have you with us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon in Alabama. More right after these messages. got hung out, didn't he? Yeah, sure did. I'll tell you what, these, we're going to see single file here in a little bit because these guys are going to learn, yeah. Basically, I think everybody's fallen in line. Yeah, right. Yeah. We are live at Talladega, Alabama for the Winston 500. Stop number nine on the Winston Cup Trail for 1992. And the leader is Sterling Marlin. Running in second spot is Dale Earnhardt. And a guy who was running in second position not too long ago has experienced the being hung out the dry syndrome, and that is Ricky Rudd. Now, he's rejoined the draft. However, he has fallen way back in line. As a matter of fact, he's back to 17. He got down on the inside, and that just was not the place to be, and it took a long time for him to find an opening so he could get back in line. There he is. 
Crafting on the 66 car, Jimmy Hensley, who's right behind Jeff Bodine in the Motorcraft car number 15. Jimmy Hensley doing a good job. First time here at Talladega. Driving the Philly Yardborough Cup Art at Ford. Dr. Hamlin, Jimmy's car, looking back at Ricky. Paul Rudd's problem was he just went to the inside, tried to make the pass, got hung on the inside. They just could not get back in line. Here he is, back in 17th spot. And how different this is from the short tracks that we've been on for the last <laughs> few weeks. They said, man, you've got to stay down on that inside. You don't want to get off that Good inside. Here. Dale Earnhardt, now the leader of this race. Dale Earnhardt has gone to the front. He led many laps last week at Martinsville, but couldn't win the race. And now he has taken the GM Goodwrench board to the lead again. Marlin now second and Allison third. Said, well, it's nice for the chil Children's Miracle Network to be getting that $100 a lap, but I need five bonus points. <laughs> Let That's me right. get up front. Of course, so many fans would like to wonder about the five bonus points. Anytime a driver leads a Winston Cup race, that is five bonus points. It's only once during the race, but if you lead at least one time during the race, there's five Winston Cup bonus points. Dale Earnhardt finished third in event last year, and he took the points lead from Ricky Rudd. He never relinquished it the rest of the season. So Dale Earnhardt now is seventh in the point standings, 144 behind the leader, Davey Allison. And we're inside now, Jeff Bodine's car. That is Wally Dallenbach just ahead. And the Mordecai telemetry showing you RPM's going to remain pretty constant when you've got your foot to the accept of the floor. 192 <laughs> miles an hour through the corner. As you go down the street, 196. And that's just about all he can 197. Get. Yep. 199. 199 miles per hour. Top speed. Watching his go this way. The only reason the car slows down is it as he makes he's trying to make the car go the other direction. And the chassis is slowing the car down to 191. Well, that doesn't mean he backed off. No. Just just the scrub in the on the tires against the pavement slowed him down a little bit. Jeff started 32nd, now running 15th. Right behind Brett Bodine. We saw Wally Dollar back on the inside just a moment ago. He, there he is on the inside. Jeff Bodine went by him. Also the 66 car of Jimmy Henson's going by. Rudd's going by. Dollar back is going to find out. Oh, and he squeezed up right in front of the 12 car. The 12 car heads to the inside, and he's going to see what he can do. But he stands a chance now of losing some spots. Well, let's go and back or back off, which he won't do going into that turn. That's Greg Sachs, the number 41, running behind Wally. And we show you the interval between that group of cars and the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace was the fifth place star. Sterling Marlin. Marlin looks on the inside. Can he pass Earnhardt? He's going to have to do it by himself, because so far his forward partner hasn't gone with him down there. He said, I'll just do it by myself. Well, maybe he won't. <laughs> He's got to get hung out. Man, I think Sterling is thinking to himself right now, not those kids. Yeah. He wants to leave purely for now. David decided, I'll go with him. Let's see if we can't get by the Chevrolet. I think they will. But meanwhile, here's Bill Elliott on the outside. And they've got Earnhardt pinned in between them. There's Rusty Wallace coming along in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac number two. And Terry Labonte is there also. Three abreast down through the tri-oval. A great battle for... here for Sterling Marlin was a car that was that Terry Levani used to win here at Talladega back in July of 1989. In fact, that car was so old, the crew said, I think Junior drove that car at Darlington in 65, at least the chassis. This thing is an old one, but it's a good one. And Darrell Waltrip has gone a lap down while Bobby Hillen has been black flagged as the crew checks for an oil leak. So Darrell Walter, who finished second in this race last year, has already lost that's a lap the, in the first 26 laps. That's the Team Ireland car that Bobby Hill is driving. The owner from Ireland comes over, loves Winston Cup racing, and came over to run the Winston 500. We're at Talladega, Alabama for the Winston 500. And at the moment, it is Sterling Marlin leading. We'll be right back.
Average speed so far, 192.980. 192.997. Faster than they qualify. Much faster than they qualify. is over. Join us at 8 o'clock tonight for exclusive coverage of ESPN Sunday Night Baseball as the Pirates will meet the Astros at the Astrodome. Sunday Night Baseball at 8 o'clock tonight live here on ESPN. At Talladega, it is still a side-by-side -side and a nose-to-tail draft of uh, speed. 193.012 is the average at this point, and that's faster than they qualified. Yes, Ernie Irvin qualified at 192.831. That was his qualifying speed. These guys are racing faster than that. The first three cars are Marlon Elliott and Dale Earnhardt, and then a little bit of separation back to fourth place, Davey Allison. Did I really say a while ago that Goodwrench Ford had a my, my mailbox going to be full this week? <laughs> I Ooh, hope you did. I'm sorry if I did. But GM Goodwrench Chevy is the third behind the couple of Fords. And those two Fords belong to Junior Johnson. He must be awfully pleased with the way his car's been running this year at Daytona in the 500. Right up front all day long. They've been up front all day long here today. The first few laps of the Winston 500, the first 30 laps. Also, so driver started back in 26. Dennis Pinson, all of our cool Chevrolet of Travis Carter, now moved up in the top 10 in the ninth place. So he's going to be in the Two Fords, a Chevy, and then fourth place is another Ford. That's Davey Allison. Looks like Davey's going to be able to run that group down pretty handily because. Uh, Seems like there's a new form of strategy among the four teams working together. How about that, Davey Allison? I think that remains to be seen right now. Uh, you know, last year in July, there was a lot of words spoken about no cooperation amongst the four drivers on the racetrack. Now, off the racetrack, the four teams have cooperated very well, and that's why the fours have done so well this year. But what happens here on Sunday when the green flag falls remains to be seen. <laughs> He's not telling anybody. He, you know, these guys are driving Fords. A bunch of them are driving Fords, but yet they want to win the race. They want. They want, they, they want to win that baby. <laughs> Everybody for himself. <laughs> and John Kernan is down on pit road with Mike B. Mike Sterling looking really good out there, kind of reminiscent of Daytona. I mean, he's right out there leading the pack, but it's in a different car. Yeah, this is a old car. The guy's put a new body on it. You know. Uh, Terry drove his car, won a race center in 88 or 89, I, I don't really know, and, and Jeff drove the car last year, wrecked out here, but we took it to my, my fabricators, they put a body on it, it's, it's a brand new car, you know, uh, I was kidding, Junior, he told me I was going to have to just use that old car if I wanted to. And uh, I was telling everybody that Junior ran it at Darlington in 65 when he said we're going down there so but it's doing well. Mike now takes a big part, you know, it's doing well, so my guy's going to do Now, what about pit stops uh, coming up under green? You have to have a driving partner, a dance partner, a drafting partner, as we've said all uh, day. Do you have something set up? Did you guys talk about this and prearrange it? Yeah, well, I talked to a couple people. Uh, I, Tim and them, I think we'll stop together, or Larry. You know, or Dale, I figure Sterling's still leading when we stop a couple of them to stop, you know. We're having a little heat problem right now. That's why we need to stay out front, but I think we'll be okay. 
that's Mike Beam, the crew chief. We expect pit stops to begin happening, guys, in probably 15 to 20 laps. An incredible pace that's being set. We have been green all the way, and let's hope we can go the entire 188 laps without a caution. 34 laps in the book right now as we begin to think about the possibility of first pit stop. And that's one problem, guys, with this drafting and drafting so tight. The car tends to, to overheat, and that's why Sterling Marlin wants to be out front so that he can keep that Maxwell House car very cool. Well, that's right. There's no way for air to go through the grill, through the radiator, and cool the thing off when you're right behind another car. And here's Harry Gant, this green and white car right in front of Sterling Marlin, almost about to go a lap down. Almost. In our last year. We said that he was not much of a factor last year. He was more of a factor than he had been because he stayed the lead lap all yeah. the time last year. He has gone a lap down as Marlon and Elliott and Earnhardt all go past him on the outside, and all Harry can do is just watch them streak by. When you mentioned Ned, the 98 car, there's Jimmy Spencer. He has worked himself into the top 10. Boy, this team has had a tough year in 1992. The Travis Carter led team, but Jimmy's looking very well here. Started 26th, currently in ninth. We see Wally Dottenbach worked his way back to 10th. You know, he got caught on the inside, drifted back to about 20th. Jimmy Spencer didn't even qualify for Daytona and has had trouble at other racetracks, but the Molly Black Gold Chevy looking good right now. He's doing a good job of staying in your mind. That's what he needs to do. Running right behind Mark Martin. Mark now up to eight for his 21st position. And Mark is close enough right now to the front that he doesn't have to worry about going any further. He can see the leaders as long as he can see them, know when they're going to pit, he can pit with them. Now it's, it comes down to the pit crews. There's so much pressure on the pit crews right now to make that good pit stop. And the number 10 car, uh, Barry Cope, is also uh, in this group. And, uh, of course, the new crew chief on this car is Barry Dotson, and Jerry's with him. Gary Coke qualified 29 to work his way into the top 15, but minutes ago we heard that he might be having a bit of a brake problem. What is it, uh, Barry? Uh, I tell you, you guys don't miss a thing. <laughs> he does a lot of maneuvering with the car using the brake pedal for position, and uh, it's a real small set of rotors. I'm sure he's just got them warm right now. I'm going to tell him we'll be in here in four or five laps. Try to get off of it. Brakes aren't a problem until you pit, and with those pit stops will be coming up in about five to seven laps. Yeah, there's the first definite indication of when we might be able to see pit stops occur. Barry saying within about four or five laps, he's going to bring his driver, Gary Cope, in for his first pit stop. That's Alan Kowicki running right ahead of him as the leader continues to be Sterling Marlin with Bill Elliott running second and Dale Earnhardt is in third. Great racing so far. Thanks for joining us at Talladega, Alabama and the Winston 500. Rusty can't pull him fast enough, Ned. Just a casual Sunday afternoon drive at Talladega in the Winston 500. Boy, it looks so easy as we watch Jimmy Hensley negotiate these 33-degree banks at speeds approaching 195 miles an hour. 
But it's not easy because there's cars beside of him, in front of him. They're everywhere, and they're all running the same speed, 195 miles per hour. That's Buddy Baker in the Kanawha Insurance car right in front of Hensley. Brett Bodine on the outside. There's Alan Kowicki up on the outside, the Hooters Ford. Is that yellow car Michael, or is that Greg Sachs? Is that Michael Walker? Anyway, we're seeing some cars beginning to slip and slide a little bit out there. Those tires are getting hot. Maybe the car's getting a little bit loose. And there's a lot of jockeying around again for position. They know those pit stops are coming up. They want to get up as far as they can before they have to make a pit stop. And as you're looking at this field, certainly remember these guys can go forward, forwards or backwards about five positions in one lap if they get in the wrong position. So this is how they crossed the line last time around. Wally Dolan back there on the right. The King is on the left. There's about, looks like at least 25 cars in this pack that we're watching here now. Four cars have pulled away. Sterling Marlin, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, and Davey Allison have pulled away from this group of cars. And as these cars run side by side, they're going to pull further away. Number of course on the right is number of laps down and cars out of the race that's also uh, specified. There is the four car breakaway draft uh, involving Marlin, Elliott, Earnhardt, and Allison. And that's the separation then back to Mark Martin, who again has looking been looking very, very good after starting in 21st position. Well, Bob, when the four cars that we saw there a moment ago were pulling away. Rusty Wallace was leading this pack. Then about two or three laps ago, Mark Martin went by and said, hey, maybe I can pull this pack a little bit faster than Rusty was. But there's Rusty and Ernie Irvin running side by side, so that's not going to help their cause too much. They need to get the single file. There's Gene Spencer trying to move up another position. But they need to get the single file if they're going to have any chance of narrowing that gap in. Inside Morgan Shepard's car. It's an Ernie Irvin's draft. Kyle Petty to the inside. Look at him move. Hey, he's found him a groove down there. The car sticks and said, maybe this will be the tip. But then he's going to get hit the straightaway. <laughs> they're going to go right on by. Yeah. Outside. Old Kyle's probably worked his way to 30 stuff to get in this position. Now he's going to go back to 30 to get if he's not careful. Damn it. Spencer saw a slight opening and he went for it and made it, although uh, <laughs> there wasn't much of a gap there. This is looking at a Morgan Shepherd's car back at Kyle Petty and Jimmy Spencer as they're side by side. Now these guys need desperately to get in line. Someone needs to get with Jimmy or with Kyle and get to the front and get in line. Otherwise, they get left in the dust. Well, guys, we're within, certainly within 10 laps of pit stops and maybe even less than that. They're running, they're coming up for the 44th lap right now, and they might be able to go 50 laps in this track with these carburetor restrictions. But I'd say that would be pretty close to the limit. There's the average speed, 190, your last lap, 192.170, and Ernie Irvin qualified for the pole at 192.8. It is a very fast, blistering pace on a warm and humid afternoon in Talladega that's being set by Sterling Marlin, closely followed by Elliot Earnhardt and Davey Allison. We'll be back with more of our live coverage from Talladega after this. Did we get a did we get a picture uh, of the baby or should I pull off on that or what? Okay. All right. I just want to get it in before the last lap. <coughs> Blots back up to there in Junior's car. Isn't that thing too a little bit cooler? I don't want it real cool, but it's just no. Just move this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You understand that, Pam? There they wanted him to come in earlier than everybody else in case the brakes didn't hold and he wouldn't slide into somebody else on pit road. Oh, right great. Hurt Hart is 
loose. They're going to add some rear blade to the car. Davey is tight. They're going to take some wedge, some bite out of the car. Martin Martin is extremely loose. They're going to add three mount rounds of bite to his car. That's just sort of setting it up to pit here in about three laps. Alabama, the 23rd annual Winston 500, getting set for the first round of scheduled pit stops. And here's what should happen. Dale Earnhardt has been playing to his crew, but his car is a little bit loose. They're going to adjust the rear spoiler, and push that blade up about two degrees. Davey Allison's been playing his car is a little bit tight. Watch them to go to the right rear and take a little bite out of the car. Mark Martin, that big challenge, is back of the back all the way to the front. Watch for him to come in and jack three rounds of bite in his car to tighten it up. Pit stops coming up in about a lap and a half here at Talladega. Bob? And one driver that has already made a pit stop is Derek Cope. And uh, with the brake uh, uncertainty, he came in early. Just in case the brakes didn't hold, he didn't want to slide into anybody. So Derek Cope has already made his first scheduled pit stop. So as Dave Marcus and Jimmy Means, both who have uh, some sponsorship today from STG, the Southeast Technical Group. They're going back out on pit road. Charlie Glock's back in the Team America car just made a pit stop. So is Greg Saxon, Kellogg, Chevrolet. And uh, others will be coming in here very, very soon. Amy Allison has a lot going on this race. He could pick up a $100,000 bonus from RJR and move a step closer to the Winston Million if he can win three of the big four. That is, uh, he's already won Daytona. This is the second leg in the World 600, the Coca-Cola World 600, the third leg, and the Southern 500, the fourth leg. If any driver can win three of those four, he'll win a million dollars. And, of course, if you win two of the four, you get $100,000. let us see if pit stops will be occurring. Lap. Let's see. They're, they're down low. Yeah, all of them. All, of them. all four of them are coming in. Coming together. That's expected. Everybody's coming in. 70 miles an hour is the speed on pit road, so they know that. They don't have any RPMs that need to turn. Let's go to the pits and John Kearney. Maxwell House team is awaiting the arrival of Sterling Marlin as he pulls into his pit stall. Now, he's complained the car is just a little bit loose. They're going to change only right side rubber. Davey Allison is also in for a right side tire change. They will make a chassis adjustment, a slight one, to tighten up the car just a little bit. Mike Bean said they qualified on 10-lap old tires, so he was afraid this would happen. Davey Allison will beat Sterling out. Now Sterling is away and headed down pit road. Jerry Punch is down further on pit road. Well, two tires have been changed. They are down and gone. I'm talking about Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. And Morgan Shepard, we are told, has possibly run out of fuel. They expected to be able to go at least 52 laps, and they have run less than 50, right at 50, and now his car coasting very slowly as pit work continues. Here is Jimmy Hensley exiting pit road. Brent Bodine, and Nick Trickle, but primarily the lead car, Earnhardt and Bill Elliott have changed only right side tires, bumped a little bit on the smaller for the Earnhardt car, and they're away. A lot of action remaining on pit road as Morgan Shepard just now makes it onto pit road. Here he is. We ride with him. Car moving very slowly down pit road, probably in less than 70 miles an hour if he is indeed out of fuel. And Jerry Punchy is headed toward you if you want to see what's the problem. Ernie Irvin, Kodak car, the Kodak Chevrolet, our coal center, he is getting fired. Changes like the other leader. Now the car stalls. He tries to get it refired. It does fire, and he heads down pit road. He will follow Mark Martin. And of course, Stanley Smith and others back toward turn one. There's the work being done on Morgan Shepard's car. He is out at 12.3 seconds. Good pit stop for Morgan. But unfortunately, he had to coast all the way around the racetrack, and that has to call 15 or 20 seconds of time he coasted around, so he will be a long way behind the leader. This all shakes out, fellas. Charlie Marlin and Baby Allison are going to come out the best on this situation because they're going to be in front of Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt, who are hooked up in the draft. Not too far behind, but uh, at least they're out of the draft. It's going to be hard. Baby Allison is in front of Sterling Marlin at the moment, but there's still some other pit stops to be made. In front of Sterling as he checks the rearview mirror and shifts into gear as he picks up speed going Bob, back. Bob, Bob, that's not Sterling. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Morning, Shepard. Thank you. What are you watching? I'm just so excited about this race. 
He said it. Oh, he's going to be excited. Oh, he said That's it. Right. He's going to be excited. <laughs> there is Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. Now, who do you see Sterling Marlin in that thing? Isn't that the fifth car there? Well, there's more. There's uh, Mark Martin. You got there's one right. That's a baby. <laughs> That's Ricky Kyle Rudd and Ricky Kyle Rudd. Rudd. <laughs> That's right. Now, there is Sterling Marlin. Well, he was there all Oh, oh Steve okay. Mark. Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay, way out in front of this group is Sterling Marlin. <laughs> and Davey Allison is leading this race now. Well, maybe we better go make some phone calls here and <laughs> enter the uh, Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. Call 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway lap. The call will cost you 95 cents. You've got to be 18 years of age and old in the winter. Stay tuned to see which driver wins the $10,000 reward. If your entry is selected, you're called at home. You will win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34 if you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge. And you can win an instant prize if you have the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Petty all wrapped together trying to get back to the front. As you said, Davey Alston came out the best on his pit stops. And I'm telling you, if this race green flag all day, it, it, the pit stops are going to win or lose this race for the drivers to lose in cars. This is a one second in the pits can mean the difference of being in the draft and out of it. Look at Kyle Petty, barely can't hang on, or can he hang on? Ricky Rudd had an awfully good pit stop. He is being shown in the pit position now with Mark Martin there in six. And Rudd was back about 15th before they made this pit stop, so he really made a good stop. There's a gaggle of a dozen cars running side by side. Oh, that looks like Blotz, Bath, and Spencer got together just a little bit, followed by Rick Mast. We're going by Darrell Walter. Walter just came out of the pits. That's Judy Donovan's car, that's Split Fire Spark Club car. And here is the leader, Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, and folks, Dale Earnhardt and Phil Ellis have run those that front piece are down. They were, what, 100 yards back then? Yeah, they were more than that, Benny. They were a little over a second behind them, and so uh, they, they have run them down. They teamed up together and pulled right back up there. So there are the four cars that we saw running in the first four positions before the pit stop. The only thing different is Davey Allison was fourth before they made the pit stop. Now he's first. And Bob Shack, the Shoney Gen car, moved over as the cars lapped by him. Davey with some bad luck last week at Martinsville, finished in 26th position, but still maintaining that points lead by a scant 16 over Harry Gant. So the first round of pit stops have been made, and we now settle down for more green flag racing. It's been three all the way for the first 54 laps of the 188 lap Winston 500. That's Schrader about to go a lap down, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Just update what happened to Morgan Shepard, guys. He was going to pit. The lap, everyone else came in, and apparently he had a car block his entrance to pit road, so he had to go around. Just as he got past the entrance to pit road, the car coughed, sputtered, and quit. Oh, he ran okay. again. So wow. that cost him uh, time for the lap, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in the lead yeah. lap. He is in the lead lap, too. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Schrader right there going a lap down. By the way, you talked about Jimmy Spencer qualifying 26 and running up in the top 10. That's a Dick Moroso engine. They borrowed an engine from Moroso with a plate on it, and it's uh, obviously a lot better than what they've had. FYI. Kyle Benny can hang on to Mark Martin Rudd.
around the world and through the year. ESPN's award-winning Speed World Auto Racing coverage. This week in Talladega, Alabama for the Winston 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. And it's Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott running together the front four. So far, these cars have averaged 190 miles an hour. That's where they pit stop going, where they slow down, stop for about 15 seconds, change tires, fill the car for fuel, and back on the racetrack. They're still averaging 190 miles per hour. There are the front four now, and we show you the interval between fourth and fifth position. Now, there's Ken Schrader. He has been lapped, waiting on the fifth place car to come down, and that is Ricky Rudd, and right behind him is Mark Martin. We are pretty far behind that car. Rudd was much closer. Rudd was behind Mark Martin a couple of laps ago, so I guess they're, going, they're passing each other back and forth, trying to figure out which combination is faster? How can we get to the front? How can we catch these guys? If Rudd is a little bit quicker in front than Mark Martin, that's how they'll run. And it might uh, also be vented that that uh, they're doing that to help cool. Maybe the uh, if one of them gets, uh, they might be overheating. Yeah. That's right. Overheating. They're talking about Sterling yeah. Marlin. His overheated. We see Sterling Marlin about following that 28 car. There's no air to go through that grill. So you got to get the air through the grill, through the radiator, to cool these engines up. Here's seventh and eighth. Kyle Petty and our pole setter, Ernie Irvin. Now, Petty had lost the draft for Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd a while back, so he had dropped back, and Ernie Irvin had come out of a pack of cars back there and caught him so they can maybe hook up together. Now Irvin is going to try to pass him and say, hey, I'm running faster. And Kyle realizes that. He won't fight him. He'll say, I just hope I can hang on to him. I think he will be able to do it. these two cars. But he doesn't have anyone in front of him to get the draft on to help him, so Kyle will pull up on his back, but now they'll run together. Kyle ought to drive in and close the gap to in the four car. Seventh and eighth position, Ernie Irvin and Kyle Petty. Irvin, of course, eligible for the Unical bonus money, mounting, to, uh, mounting today to $22,800. He can win the race. That's the bonus he picks up for the Unical Corporation. If he doesn't win the race, no one else will get the money. Got another $7,600. And we'll go on to Charlotte. Well, there's still 30 cars in the lap. Pretty amazing and an incredible pace that's being set with no cautions to this point. I think that's the key. The fact that we haven't had a caution and still have that many cars in the lead lap. While we're kind of settled down here and watching the uh, action, we welcome a new race fan into the world today. Our normal producer for NASCAR Winston Cup telecast, Neil Goldberg, left on Friday after coming down here preparing to do the show, but wife Laura was ready to give birth to Zachary Alexander who came into the world on Friday night nine pounds five ounces and uh, we wish Neil and Laura the best also Zachary and Zachary that's for sure and brother Justin yeah the whole family <laughs> there's Jimmy Spencer and right behind him is Rusty Wallace and then Michael Waltrip Spencer leading this group Spencer right now is 11th spot, 10th spot. <laughs> Rusty wants to get in front. If he, they'll follow Spencer for a lap or two and see who's faster, and then they need to work together. The crews need to work together to keep these cars running as fast as possible because I'm telling you, they got Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott up there. They are running some blistering laps. Yes, they are. They're running a good bit faster than Ernie Irvin qualified. For example, Irvin was about 49, 60 something in seconds around this racetrack. Right now, Davey Allison and that front group are running about 49, 30, so three tenths of a second faster than Ernie qualified. Rick Mast in car number one finds himself in 14th spot. Old Flipper, remember last year in the Talladega 500, the race here in August, yep. flipped over, slid down the front sweater on the roof. Yep. They said he looked like a mole crawling out of that car. <laughs> he was laying on the roof. He had to dig some dirt out to get out of it. 
That is Stanley Smith right behind him. Stanley was another one of those guys who had a uh, disqualification of his first qualifying run. They found some uh, what they determined as illegal fuel, and so he was uh, disqualified and qualified on the second day. And I think it was fuel that was not, it was not a popped up type of a fuel. It was not an additive. They had been down here testing last week. Michael Walker seems yeah. to be off the pace there, sure guys. That's him all Pontiac. Just more than out of the rest. Yeah. It looks like Michael Walker's problems are continuing because he is definitely off the pace. But anyway, they were down here testing last week, a group of cars, and uh, they, the Unical pumps, they've changed things around here in the infield of Talladega, and the pumps were not working to, to get Unical gas. They went across the track to the Talladega Super Speedway, got some Cam 2 gas just to finish their test. Well, they didn't take that out of the car, so the, the uh, Stanley Smith group said, and uh, it was still in there, but it was not the Unical gas that they're supposed to have. So Michael Waltrip relinquishes 12th place as he is running very slowly on the racetrack. On the racetrack, there are a lot of positions being changed. Here's Wally Dallenbach running alongside Jeff Bodine again in Greg Sachs. Dave Bader in the red and white car has running star. Sachs. Motorcraft telemetry once again showing you the RPMs and the speed that's being changed. You'll not see, of course, any uh, braking or probably not. Every once in a while, he might reach up to just touch it with his left foot to keep from running over someone in front of him, but he certainly doesn't have to use the brakes to, to slow the car down to the end of the corner. Now, under normal circumstances, you don't do it. And you, you speak with authority, Mr. Parsons, because uh, we'd like to point out that here in 1982, old BP was the first Winston Cup NASCAR driver to officially qualify above 200 miles an hour at this race track. Yeah, ran two, I think, 200 points. One. Uh, later in 1985 or something, or 87, Bill Elliott qualified for 212 yeah. miles an hour here. As a matter of fact, he qualified this weekend 21.9 miles an hour slower yeah. than he did in uh, 1987. They <laughs> have restricted the engines in the car, so he just will not run that yeah. 215 miles an hour. It's just simply not safe. Great shot from the roof cam here on uh, Jeff Bodine's car as we are at Talladega Super Speedway and running speeds in excess of 192 miles an hour. Davey Allison has the lead back in just a moment. Is that me that keeps unplugging the monitor, or is it somebody else? Well, the monitor. Maybe it was me. Well, is, I thought it was plugged in. Okay. Might be here. I might be yep. stepping on that thing. I probably am. Yeah, oh, I, it, we just keep, it gets, keep it unplugged. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Quickie ran Mark, ran Kyle Petty in the. Quickie ran Kyle Petty and Ernie Irvin down by mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We might do that with uh, Brett Bodine if you want to. Jim Crawford yesterday. If Bodine is anywhere to be found. Yeah, he's joining 20 turns. Turn one and two right now. Well, next week here on ESPN, Sunday, May the 10th, second day of time trials for the Indianapolis 500-mile race. And we will be live from 2 until 3 o'clock Eastern and then return that same afternoon from 6 until 7 to wrap everything up. They're qualifying at the Indianapolis 500 next weekend. And you'll see it live here on ESPN. And yesterday, the first day of practice for the 500-mile race found Jim Crawford approaching 230 miles an hour. Jim Crawford, of course, driving a Kenny Bernstein-owned Indy car. Kenny Mer very much involved in drag racing, of course, with himself and uh, with the uh, Winston Cup team of Brett Bodine and the Indy cars of both Jim Crawford and Roberto Ferrero. 229 miles an hour, and I just said a moment ago, 215 miles an hour. 
<laughs> you know, there is a lot of speculation all over the place in Indianapolis, in Daytona Beach, in Charlotte, all over the place about the possibility of the Winston Cup NASCAR circuit coming to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for a Winston Cup race. Probably not next year, maybe not the year after, but sometime in the future, the uh, Winston Cup guys at Indy. Would you like that, guys, running at Indianapolis? And not an Indy car. <laughs> Not an Indy car, a stock car. Oh, I don't. I think it'd be neat. Maybe we'll get a chance to do it. I think it'll add some some class to the, the circuit. I don't know. It, it'd be be fun to run an Indy car there too. But <laughs> it'd be neat. I'd love it. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's got a lot of history behind Indy, and uh, you know we put on a good show, Bert. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not that excited about going to their facility and and racing because. People go to the Indy 500 not because it's a race; they go because it's a, a an event, and uh, you know that's why there's 400,000 people there. I'd venture to say 200,000 of them don't care if they race or not; they just have to be there. It'd be great because they're going to raise walls. And walls may be a little nervous there for a while. Cause I thought I could make it over one of those, but you know that that's just something. You know, I'd love to race there, and uh, just because of Indy, and uh, one dream I've always had. Uh, and racing was to drive at Indianapolis. Well, I can't do that in a champ car, an Indy car. It'd be fun to do it in a stock car. Okay, guys in the booth, what do you think? Dan, would you like to see him go to Indianapolis? Well, I think uh, because of the notoriety of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I think that it would be great for them to go there, and I think they'd put on a good show. I'd love it. I would absolutely love it. We mentioned the fact that Jim Crawford was the fastest at Indianapolis yesterday in the first day of practice. His car owner standing by with Jerry Punchin. Hey, he himself, Kenny Bernstein, is the fastest man alive going over 300 in a dragster. Indeed, Bob, the fastest man alive, Kenny Bernstein. And Kenny, we go from one speed plant to another next week in Indianapolis for qualifying. And you have two cars, both of which have been the fastest two up there in testing. Uh, your thoughts about the pole speeds uh, for Crawford and Guerrero? Well, I hope that it holds true. I'm going to say 228, 229 will probably take it to get the pole. It's hard to tell sometimes with practicing and everything with the toes around there. But Parker State Duke's been doing good up there. What are your thoughts about NASCAR going up to the Brickyard, possibly as early as maybe next summer? They look pretty exciting. I happened to be there today. They were testing the IROC cars, and they looked like they were having a lot of fun out there. So it's a great part of the country to have a, a NASCAR race, believe me. Well, the man who will get the best of both worlds, Indy car racing, he have two cars up there next week, and possibly a NASCAR race there in the future. And meanwhile, his car running off the wear here at Talladega as we've had a change up front, Bob. Indeed, Sterling Marlin has taken over command of the lead again from Davey Allison, with Earnhardt still running in third and Bill Elliott in fourth spot. If Sterling car, Marlin's car is still running hot, I'm sure he wanted to lead this thing and try to cool it off a little bit. But what about poor old Earnhardt and Bill Elliott? They're back there and certainly haven't been able to get any fresh air at all to cool their cars down. I just talked to Mike Beam. I said, yeah, Sterling just decided the car's running a little bit too hot, so he decided to punch it and pass Davey. And Mike Beam looked at him and said, Big smile on his face. I wish you could have seen it. He said, yeah, uh -huh. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sterling has had one of the strongest cars, if not the strongest car, in the uh, first 73 laps of this race. And every time he leads a lap again, $100 for the Children's Miracle Network. The next one is, look at this, $191.1 miles an hour with a pit stop. And the race record is 186. 288. That was Bill Elliott. 1985. 1985. And one of the reasons because the speed was so fast that year was because they had the fewest number of cautions in history here at Talladega. That was two. And so far, we haven't had any. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could run this entire race without a caution? But there is a lot of traffic back in the back of the leaders. I'll tell you what, if we don't have a wreck back there, it's going to be in there. <laughs> because it's from 7th to 23rd. All those cars, bumper to bumper, all of them, knowing that seventh place is right up there. They're going to get mentioned if they get up to seventh. But we're not going to talk about them if they're back to 23rd. You know, Richard Trading, we're not going to talk about you back there. you got to go to the front. <laughs> Spare the money. you got to get up past these guys. Morgan Shepard. You know, he's doing pretty good. 
the fact that he ran out of gas and had to coast around the racetrack to beat this guy. Yeah, that was explained to us by uh, Jerry on pit road uh, while we were in a commercial break. Morgan's path toward the pit was blocked when he wanted to come in, and then the car ran out of fuel. Look at Jimmy Spencer really going high up in turn two. He almost got to the wall before he ever got started down the straightaway, but he came off at it, got a good run down the straightaway. Well, a pretty good run. Morgan Shepard is still there beside him. Both of those drivers, Bob, will be making a special appearance a week from today if you see Charlie Gloss back down on the inside coming around. But Jimmy Spencer, Morgan Shepard, Dale Jarrett, Junior Johnson, yours truly, will be at the Race of Life, Race for Life, at the Poco Rhythm Ranch in Morganton, North Carolina, to benefit two young boys, Leon and Danny Crump. Now, Danny Crump, senior, is a member of Travis Carter's crew chief, or a member of his crew. And he has two young sons who have a rare disease, adrenoleukodystrophy. And one of them needs a home transplant. So next Saturday, May the 9th, a lot of us are going to get together and try to get those boys and Charlie Charlie stands. Charlie Glossback, who won the Arca race, is he going to say no? No, there ain't no way. No, caution is out. Yep, he makes pretty hard contact with the inside dirt bank off of turn number two. Bringing out our first caution of the day. Charlie Glossback in Sellersburg, Indiana, won the Arca race here yesterday, was running alongside Richard Petty when he lost it from off the second corner. Yeah, he just was trying to get by Richard and had to pin the car a little bit too much, had to bring it down a little bit too much, lost control, and he's made some pretty good contact. I'm sure that since they're not racing for the points, Junior's not racing for the points, he will be. Well, he's the Team he's America's split car spark plugs car. Now, let's see what happened. He's got the car starting. He's trying to drive away. We see him on the inside of Richard Petty, but he wants to take the car up. All of a sudden, just loses control. Richard is on the outside of him. That does not give him that usual that cushion of air out there to lean the car on. Richard took all that air away, and he just lost control. As he off the corner. You can see he still has the wheel spinning there, Benny. He's wanting to get that thing headed in a forward direction for a moment, but then he hits that wall of dirt down on the inside. You can see the damage that was done. Now Charlie's got it rolling again. That right front, uh, the right front is going, uh, let's see, that's going about south, and the left front's going north. <laughs> so, yeah, he decided he's better just quit. Yeah. But obviously, Charlie is okay. He just wanted to drive closer to the camera position, Benny, so that's that nice we could get a good shot of the split fire. <laughs> I'm glad to see that Charlie's okay. Took a pretty hard shot there when he hit the inside uh, dirt bank. The pace car has the field bunched up for the first time in today's event. It comes on lap 77. Boy, these first four cars certainly did not want to see that car. Like they had this race decided amongst those four cars. One of those four cars was going to win the race. Yep. But there were about 25 others back there that were glad to see this exactly. car. Exactly. Now we have another angle of uh, Charlie's incident. A little bit tighter. You see the front end starts to drift up just a little bit. He was—he might have touched Teddy there, and when he pulled it back down, the back end went around on him. Not much he could do about it at that time. Gets her down on the grass, and you can see the wheels are still pulling, spinning. He has it in a forward position, but it just won't stay. The momentum carries it around that way. Then he gets it straight again and said, hey, maybe I got it this time, but then the back end goes the other way. Don't get a lot of traction on that grass. And he said, uh-oh, here's this wall. But you know, he never locked the brakes up till there at the last instant. Yeah, he kept his foot on the floor. He, he kept right, he letting the car roll. He was hoping to save it. A little different from just a couple of hours ago when we seen him win here on right. ESPN. Well, pit stops are occurring once again. Here comes Marlon and the others. John Kernan reports. Well, as you said, this is what the leaders did not want to see, but those guys running in that second pack of cars are just thinking they're lucky stars. Sterling Marlin, the leader, brings the Maxwell House Ford down onto pit road. He will go to work. They will go to work on the right side. It'll be a four-tire change. They will also make a chassis adjustment as Mike Beam comes across. Marlin on the top of your screen. Davey Allison on the bottom. Right sides are going on already. The jack swinging around to the left side of the car. Now, Sterling expected to get an adjustment also on the spoiler. They were thinking about beating that up. Allison's team now putting on his Joey Knuckles and yeah, go, go, go. Davey Allison will get out now to beat up the spoiler a little bit. Sterling's away and Jerry is in Earnhardt's pit. They've already changed right side tires, John. Now left side has gone on Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. And Sterling Marlin goes by Earnhardt and Elliott on pit road headed back to the first one. Well, this is the first time these guys have been able to pit under the yellow flag. They only had one pit stop. That was a green flag stop with right side tires only. So we're under caution here at Talladega, Alabama. 
Talladega Super Speedway for the 23rd annual running of the Winston 500. Chevrolet trying to get their first win for 92. We'll back for more from Talladega after this. Terry? Hmm, Terry? We're supposed to have a piece of tape there that I did that aired on Speed Week last night concerning the drive plates. On the 22 car, there was a guy on the right rear that looked like he was lubricating the drive plates. It might be now a good time to show that and air that piece if we have time to air it or we have any... Yep, okay. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston 500 from Talladega, Alabama. And for the first time this afternoon, the leader of this race is Elmo Langley in the pace car. We're under our first caution of the day and involved an accident out of turn two involving Charlie Klotzbach. And Elmo was saying, am I ever going to get out there and make a few laps? <laughs> well, look who won the race out of the pits, ladies and gentlemen. Ernie Irvin must have just changed two tires or something like that. Man. I think that was the case because he, he did get out first by a pretty good margin, really. So I think that he perhaps did uh, just change two tires. Ernie Irvin is right behind the pace car as we are cleaning up the uh, crack night over out of turn number two. Charlie was able to drive the car down the road just a little bit, but then uh, it stopped and is being pulled into the garage area on a hook. Davey Allison's right behind Ernie as we get set for the restart here in a lap or two. To Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt. There's still 25 cars in the lead lap, fellas. There's Jeff Bodine. He's taking a little bit of a breather from the 192-plus mile-an-hour pace that was being set. Jimmy Hensley also carrying one of our in-car cameras. He looks almost as relaxed there under caution as he did during, <laughs> during the high speed. Morgan Shepard, the Sitco car, also taking it easy. And Bobby Hamilton also carrying one of our in-car cameras here today. He's conferring with his pit crew. We saw his right hand underneath his thumb is a button. He presses that down, he's able to speak to his crew. Well, let's go down to the pit area for a report from Dr. Jerry Punch. Bob, you know how some drivers are pretty superstitious. They like to get some good luck charms. They get rabbit feet or whatever. Well, Dale Earnhardt has a good luck congressman here in his pits. And when the, we're with the Honorable Claude Harris, the congressman of the 7th District here of Alabama, lives over in Tuscaloosa. And now, Congressman, how did you get to be a good luck charm? And you're dressed up in the Goodrich Chief Rat. How did this work out? Well, two years ago, I was grand marshaled here, and, uh, and Dale won, and, and so uh, he asked me to come back this time and uh, bring him some good luck, and so I, I'm here and I'm rooting for him. Now, that's some horsepower, folks, when you can get a congressman to come in and put on your pit uniform and stand here all day to be your good luck charm. Let's go up pit road where Terry Labonte, unfortunately, is behind the wall, but our John Kernan is there. Well, Jerry, they say all good things must come to the end. Terry, you were the only driver to have finished in the top ten. Obviously, that's going to end today. What put you out? Well, I guess we burn a piston or something. I really don't know. It's a shame. I'll tell you what, our guys have done a great job all year. Uh, we got a week off, and we'll be back. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's disappointing to, to fall out because we had a good streak going. We'll just have to start a new one. How did you like the Ford as compared to the other makes you've driven this year? <laughs> well, it's okay. It's a good car. Uh, we were off just a little bit on their chassis. We were trying to wait for a caution flag to uh, to adjust on a little bit, and uh, then we lost the cylinder, so it didn't matter. 
What's the plan with, I know I was speaking with you last week at Martinsville, you weren't quite sure how many races you'd run the Ford. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it might have changed today, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. That's Terry Labonte, gentlemen. They're getting ready to go green again. Well, he should know which uh, car feels best this year. He's been, been in three different ones, an Oldsmobile, a Chevy, and a Ford today as uh, Elmo brings the pace car off the track onto pit road. And we get set for a resumption of racing in the Winston 500. It'll be Urban, Allison, running in third position as they get the green flag as Sterling Marlin. Then it is Dale Earnhardt running in fourth. Green flag is out once again. Stanley Smith's up in the fifth spot. And Morgan Shepard's trying to go, on out, go by him on the outside. He moved up right against the wall, said, you're not passing me on the outside. I, I might be a rookie, but I know that trace. Stanley, car number 49, just ahead of Morgan Shepard. Here yeah. comes Davey and Sterling and Dale and uh, who else? Who else? <laughs> might be good by Ernie. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be. He loses the lead, now loses second, about to lose third, and here comes Stanley Smith joining the group at the bottom of the racetrack. And Ernie is already back to fourth as Allison now leads. Morgan Shepard's car as he looks at Stanley Smith. Stanley's able to get back in line. There's Ernie going by Morgan on the outside. And so is Bill Elliott. Looks like Morgan has lived on the bottom of the racetrack all day, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He, he likes to run down there. We're getting closer yeah. to the halfway point, and to enter the Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes, call 1 900 436 7000 before the halfway lap, which is 94. The call will cost you 95 cents. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter. If you're called back during today's race and you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you will win a new Chevrolet Lumina Z34, and you can win an instant prize for having the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Gillette Halfway Challenge coming up. In about 12 more laps. It's lap 82 now, and the halfway point is 94. There's his Ernie pulling out on the outside, trying to go by Stanley Smith on the outside, but once again, Stanley's not going to let him do that. Alan Kowicki, the car behind Bill Elliott. Rusty Wallace, right behind Kowicki. Ricky Rudd. Basically, nine cars now in that lead draft. Bringing up the tail, the caboose on the train is Ricky Rudd. Well, he wants to stay in line. He see the big pack of cars behind him. And he wants to stay in line so that that pack can't catch up to him. But he sees this race up front of him here. Ernie might have it this time. He might have finally gotten on the outside of Stanley Smith. I think he has. That will put Stanley back to the end of the line. He'll be the caboose on this train. We have seen the Winston Cup points battle tighten every race this year to the point now where the top five separated by 83. And in case you just joined us, let's uh, review who has done what so far. Davy Allison, he's okay. Harry Gant off the pace very early. He's lapsed down. Terry Labonte is already out of the race. Bill Elliott is running well, and so is Alan Kowicki. So again, we're going to see a tightening of the points in this event. Harry Gant is currently being shown in 30th place, one left behind the leaders. There's Stanley Smith still on the inside. Can't get the back to the inside. Once again, Ernie Urban looking to the outside of Dale Earnhardt as they come down through the trioval, but he falls back in line and six cars nose to tail down through here the top six davy allison leading looking for the second leg of the winston million for 1992. we'll be right back i came to you lynn don't tell me you don't <laughs> Okay, good. Well, something happened to Spencer on the restart. Really fell Dale Jarrett and uh, uh, Ted Musgrave and several of them up. They did a lot of drafting together yesterday afternoon, the six stars and the six stars.
Okay, thank you. Nearing the halfway point of the Winston 500, here are the top five. Davey Allison leads, Sterling Marlin is second, Dale Earnhardt running third, Bill Elliott is fourth, and Ernie Irvin finds himself in fifth spot. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Pennzoil, the motor oil that outperforms any leading motor oil against viscosity breakdown. And by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Beautiful Sunday afternoon at Talladega, Alabama, and King Richard is uh, falling back on the field as we watch this uh, group of cars running nose to tail up front. There's the King. He seems to be back up to speed now. The last lap, the last lap he was very, very slow, but now he seems to be back up to speed. I think he might have got uh, in some traffic there that maybe a little bit of a tap that uh, caused him to have to back off for a moment, but now he comes yeah. back up on Dale Jarrett there. Jerry had just passed him the lap before. Jerry and Jimmy Spencer. Spencer had a, a something malfunction on the restart of this race and got four or five cars. Jerry was one of them really behind on the restart, but they're trying to catch up now. Sterling Marlin trying to take the lead down in turn one. Earnhardt thought about following, but he said, no, I don't think that's going to be wise. He moves up now. Sterling Marlin once again has the lead. Oh, he's just about the only one that we have seen uh, go from second or third to the lead. He's got a strong car, no question about it. But he's got five or six drivers right behind him. Just a minute ago, Sterling Marlin told the crew he wanted that halfway money. He wanted it bad. They, of course, everything is teamwork now in racing, so he really almost has to ask for permission. So they turned him loose and said, go get it. And that was a lap ago when he went by Davey Allison. Now it just remains to be seen if he can stay out there until halfway. There are four laps to go to the halfway point, so the driver leading at that point will indeed win $10,000 from the halfway challenge. There's about 13 cars in this lead draft. Ernie Irvin was fifth when he came back to the first. Remember, he was fifth on the board? Well, he's got caught on the inside, and now he's going to the back. And Wallace. He's in sixth. Looks fun. And he runs behind him in seventh. Rusty's best Talladega finish was in July 1988. He ran fifth. Of that slower car up there in front of him. That's Jimmy Means. He wants that 10 grand. 49-23, the seconds in that last lap for Sterling Marlin. That's about four tenths of a second faster than he was on the way in. And Sterling hasn't had a great year. Bill Elliott won four races. Davey Austin played with Kaliki and Martin Martin, so you know, they've taken the bulk of the money. And I'm sure that Sterling will get 50% of that $10,000, so $5,000 payday didn't look too bad. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd go for it if I could win it. You need to grab one of these race cars. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, sir. You, you guys can do that. I'll just stay up here. We have another field summary for you. Running down the entire field as it was running last lap. Two more laps to go for the halfway money, and Jerry Punch has another story from Pit Road. Just seconds ago, Richard Childress radioed his driver, Dale Earnhardt, and said, hey, just a couple laps to halfway. Earnhardt sort of chuckled almost and came back in the radio and said, 
Yeah, and I'm going to get a lot of help from these guys around me here, too. <laughs> He's surrounded by Fords. He doesn't have a friend out there close to him. <laughs> He, he came, probably came and looking in the rearview mirror and find a friend. <laughs> There's Kowicki and Rusty Wallace. I guess Rusty would probably be the closest thing you have to a friend to try to help him win $10,000. We shouldn't say that because these guys are friends, and that friends and that was dramatically pointed out last week when Kyle Petty caught fire in the backstretch, and the first person to his rescue was a fellow driver, Jeff Rodine, who had dropped out of the race. It's every man for himself out there on the racetrack, but when you get in trouble, you have a lot of friends out there. Let's see what Jeff Bodine can do. He's in front right now. 189 miles an hour and 87. See, that's the slowest we've seen him as the cars run side by side. See what a dramatic difference it makes when these cars run 182 miles per hour. Before, he was 192 when he was in line. Hmm. That's Dennis Spencer that just went by him on the inside, and Dale Jarrett was following Spencer. I don't think Jarrett's been able to clear Jeff Bodine yet as they go into turn three. That is amazing, Betty. 182. Yeah. Well, there's Rick and Mass, and there must be other cars on the inside. That's why the car was 10 miles an hour slower than it was earlier. Looking back from the Morgan Shepherd car on to Mark Martin, Valvoline Ford. Eighth and ninth position. Now they're on the racetrack, working right behind the Mark Martin. The halfway point has been achieved. The halfway point has been achieved, and the leader at the halfway point is Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin leads at the halfway point, and he takes home $10,000 from Gillette Halfway Challenge. If you've entered the contest and are called back here in the next few minutes and you can identify the winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you will win the Chevrolet Lumina C34. Sterling Marlin is the name to tell the person that calls you if you're called here in the next few minutes. John Kernan is down with Michael Kranipus, one of the top Ford executives watching the action here today. Well, Michael, the Ford's just wrapped up the uh, halfway money, the uh, right guard challenge at $10,000, looking to make it a Ford victory. You guys are really getting your homework done, aren't you? It's been a very good season for us so far, and specifically that all of our teams are doing well. We've got so far, I think, four different drivers winning races, and uh, that's great. There, now we uh, understand the yellow flag is now out, so we'll have to cut this short, gentlemen. What's going on? We don't know. Uh, it's nothing serious. There might be some oil in turn four. It is not for an accident because all cars are okay. It could be for some debris or some oil, and Greg Sachs just went behind the wall, so it could be that his car was laying down some fluid, some oil, and they'll check it out and turn four and all the way around this 2.6-mile track before we go back to green. And there is Greg, who has climbed out of his Kellogg's car. And we should be seeing some pit stops here in the next few moments, but in the meantime, we're going to take a break and return with more action from the Winston 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. should have done that when Charlie crashed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did we get that tape on the drive plates? Running as much camera on here. Uh, about to be in 
Yes only, huh? And they do have a new uh, rule that's in effect for the Winston. 1.8. Oh! Wicked just a foul. NASCAR Winston Cup, Winston 500 from Talladega Super Speedway under caution at lap number 97. Coming up next here on ESPN, the final round of the Senior PGA Las Vegas Senior Classic from Desert Inn Country Club. That's coming up right after our coverage of this event. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, you'll be able to see the recap of this event, checkered flag, tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. You mentioned earlier that Charlie Klotzbach was the winner of the uh, ARCA race, the Poulon uh, ARCA race that was held here yesterday, and the uh, Poulon Weed Eater Independence Bowl is coming up on ESPN this year, so we uh, appreciate their support of auto racing and of football and for all the other sports that are on ESPN. It's cold. You know, like the country. yeah, but their advertisement says uh, regardless of whether you say it Poland or Poulan, we don't care as long as we sell our product. I understand. I, the I weed eaters and so forth. I understand. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good at that. Well, fellas, all the drivers on the lead lap have made a pit stop. Many of them just made stop and go for gas while some took on tires. Here are those cars coming into the pits that are at least one lap down. I know Earnhardt just took gas. Uh, look at me like that because... They didn't have the car, they put any tires at all on the car. Jerry's Bunch, what did they do? They just gas only on Earnhardt? Exactly, gas only on Earnhardt and, and uh, the car number 11 of Bill Elliott. But I will mention, Earnhardt, uh, Richard Childers wanted to put two right side tires. The crew wanted to go ahead and take time under the caution to put two right side tires. Earnhardt is the one who made the ultimate call. He said, no. He said, I can't afford to lose one spot on the racetrack. It's so tough to pass out there. I can't afford to lose any time. So no tires, gas only, and they were gone. Dale Earnhardt has pulled ahead of the pace car. What's going on? Play with Elmo. He, he loves to play with Elmo. <laughs> Sometimes you get behind him and bump him and do all kind of things. Elmo, he just sits there and takes it in stride. <laughs> and uh, now that Earnhardt's got back in line, Elmo gave him the OK sign. Hey, I, you know what? Earnhardt thought maybe he had something wrong. He wanted to check on a flat tire or something. He asked Elmo to check on a flat tire or something. You know, so they said Elmo gave him. Well, well, I'll I'll to someone there. Yeah. He's telling him to stay back there this time. He's <laughs> <laughs> he rolled that window up because he certainly wanted his air conditioning to be going out the window. Did you, Elmo, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> we are under caution because of uh, some oil down in turn number four that the track crew is cleaning up right now. There's the top five. Earnhardt, Elliott, Marlin, Martin, and Davey Allison. And there's six through ten. We'll be right back. Bless you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, after the run, two or three laps, it won't matter whether they got on new ones or not. I think Ernie Urban, had he's way back. He had to change tires because he only took on right sides the last time. Hey, Benny, uh, the camber deal here at Talladega, the most I can find uh, is about a degree and a half. And that's only most of them are less than a degree here on the camber end. Yeah, I think about a degree and a half. Is, I mean, that's what yeah. I know. That's what Judy had in his car was right, a degree and right, a half. Right, right, degree and a half. And you know the new rule effective in Charlotte is 1.8 degrees max. Right. And they can't grease them anymore. No grease fittings, and they got to have all steel drive plates. Yeah, I looked like the 22 car was greasing his out there yeah, a moment ago. Yeah, well, I think so. And that, on the right side, you mean? Yeah. 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 That's too bad. I mean, I just think we need to follow up after last week of all the problems yeah, they had. I right. just felt like we need to follow up on it. Well, it's not a, you know, it wouldn't be a major problem here as it would be somewhere like Martinsville. The only problem here is if something happens, they're going to crash if they break one here. Okay. Getting set for a restart at Talladega, Alabama. The Winston 500 under our second caution of the afternoon because of some uh, oil on the racetrack. Look at this crowd, and it has uh, sun-baked 
nice, hot, warm afternoon here in Alabama with the skies partly cloudy right now, and they're still looking good. No chance of rain, I don't think, before the race ends. See, by you know there, Benny? <laughs> you know, last week at Barnesville, Earnhardt was leading the race, Ernie Irvin leading the race, uh, Alan Kowicki, and all these fellas had axle problems. What they were doing was beating the spline up in the drive plate that drives the car in the rear. I hope you saw Speed Week last night. I stopped by Alan Kowicki's shop this week and, and tried to show what the, the drive plate was. At, at Martinsville, some of these cars had like two and a half degrees negative camber in the rear. Here at Talladega, about a degree and a half would be the most they run. It is a radial tire. That they are running the camera to run, but about a degree and a half, and they don't feel like that would be a problem injuring the, even the spine up in the driveway here at Talladega. The NASCAR has come out with a new rule that will be effective beginning for the Winston, the maximum 1.8, and that's for the rest of the season. As the green flag comes out, and we are back to racing. Dale Earnhardt takes off with Bill Elliott right behind him, and here comes Sterling Marlin. Shredder's a lap down. He tried to move up behind that group and draft along with him, but his car is just not good enough today to hang in that group. Mark Mark tried to go back, couldn't make it. Kyle Bader was off to a little bit of a slow start back there, made a little bit of a gap after the first six or seven cars, but now they're beginning to catch up. Schrader is 25th, a lap down. It's Earnhardt. Elliott and Marlin up front. Four cool cars still in the lead lap. You see Martin, Davey Alves, Ricky Rudd, also Kyle Petty. They're trying to dispense off the lap car straight. Ricky Rudd's had a good run today. He has the start been good. Comes Ricky on the inside. He's trying to go by Kyle Petty. And Morgan Shepard, I think, is going to help him, and I believe they're going to be able to make it. Well, nice well there's Rusty right behind him. Morgan, who was behind him. Dale Jarrett is following Rusty Wallace through there. They just mentioned he's supposed to be right behind Morgan. I don't know. His car, it certainly didn't take off very well because there was a space of about 50 yards opened up right going into turn one. And now he's back up to speed. You see how wise Kyle Petty was? You know, he could have stayed up beside of Jimmy Spencer, but he realized if he had stayed up beside of him, they're just going to fall back, back, back. He eased off the gas, let Spencer pull up in front of him and get in line. That's the only way they're going to catch up with these guys. Yep, you got to stay in line. You start running side by side, it's going to cost you. First 24 cars are on the lead lap. Ken Schrader in 25th, one lap down. Everybody else at least one lap down. Dave Marcus running in 30th spot. There's three laps down to the leader. Only one incident so far in the first 102 laps of this race, and that involved Charlie Watts back in uh, car number 90, who is being shown right now in 37th position. He hit the wall coming out of the second turn on the back stretch. He's okay. The car badly damaged. There was one other caution flag. Uh, I think it's more like in turn four. NASCAR checked the race track. And they look has been, there has been two caution flags. And Elliott goes for the lead down in turn one. And he's got Sterling Marlin right behind him. Let's see if Mark Martin will move, move down that low line. No, he stays behind Earnhardt. So the junior Johnson cars go to the front once again. Elliott and Marlin. The crowd here on the main straightaway loves it. Don't you know Junior Johnson just loves it, too? For four or five years, or what? Five or six years, I guess, his cars have just not been uh, the dominant cars that we've known Junior Johnson's cars to be over the years. But this year, he's back to the front. They told the 500, it looked like this quite often. Look at the crowd cheering. <laughs> oh, they love it. They love Bill Elliott now here. Nearby Georgia. This is the first time I've this led today, isn't it? Yep, yes, I it is. Yep, yep. Justin Budweiser Ford out front. Gets a five bonus Western Cup points for leading the state lap. And then, of course, the driver who leads the most laps gets the five front points. A bunch of Fords up there, two Chevrolets. Elliott in a Ford, Sterling Marlin in a Ford, Earnhardt in a Chevrolet. And then it's Mark Martin in the fourth. Davey Allison on the outside trying to go by Martin. 
He's got some help with Ricky Rudd in the Chevrolet. Allison's in the fourth. And there's Junior watching his two cars running first and second. Now you see he had 22 on the left side on his sleeve there. I bet he's got 11 on the other side. <laughs> Showing no favor in his right. <laughs> And Mark Martin yep. is hung out on the inside and is going backwards. Boy, he sure is. Yeah, he's going to wind up 11. That's where he's going to wind up, I think. He was third just a moment ago, and now he's going straight back. There's nothing he can do about it. Now, there's an opening right behind Dale Jarrett, between Jarrett and... Oh, he gets in there in front of... Wow, I didn't think there was room for a car in there. But <laughs> there now Jarrett Coke packed off, and there he goes. I agree with There wasn't room to put a car in there, but somehow it fit. In a little different way than you try to park on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Bill Elliott has fallen from third position in the points that he had for a while down to fourth, but he now stands a good chance of moving back into third because Terry Labonte is already out of the race at Sterling. Marlin will now drop to the inside in turn number one and try to take the lead away from Bill, and he does easily. He does easily. His car is really good. Dale Earnhardt watching everything from third position. And boy, Mark Martin went away high up in turns one and two. Picked him up a couple of positions up there. Looked like he was going into the wall, but he knew what he was doing. Now Martin get teamed up with Morgan Shepard and Alan Kulik picked up more fours. Right now, the last car in the lead lap is King Richard Petty. Started 17th and is currently running in 23rd position. Boy, you've seen that STP on the side of King Richard's car for many, many years. He started, uh, this is his 45th start at Talladega. Two wins, last one coming in the Winston 500 in 1983. But for almost two decades, 20 years, you've associated Petty and STP. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch with this week's this Richard Petty memory is brought to you by the First Brand Corporation, makers of STP, son of a gun, protector. The year was 1973, and Richard Petty beat Bobby Isaac en route to his fourth career Daytona 500 victory. The first with STP colors on his Dodge. When it was over, Andy Granatelli's antics in victory lane overshadowed the win. So we went down and uh, everything was working. Uh, we got all the brakes during the race. Uh, I guess the biggest memory of the deal was was me trying to dodge Andy Granatelli in the, uh, the winter circle. Uh, you know, they won uh, the 70, 69 race, I guess, with uh, Andretti at, at Indy. And, uh, you know, he picked he picked Andretti up and gave him some sugar and stuff. Man, they come in the, in the uh, winter circle there, and we was just tickled to death, having a big time. And here he come, knocked everybody out of the way, got up there trying to hug me and all that stuff. And I, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, the, from the racing standpoint, it was just a good race for us. Everything fell in, fell in place. But uh, I think I remember the winter circle more than I remember the race. If you don't like the looks of your car, Final Winston 500, not his final race here at Talladega. That will come in the Die Hard 500 later, but the King will always rule here at Talladega and in Winston Cup NASCAR stock car racing. King Richard Petty. Quite a, a lot of cars around him. Meanwhile, the lead draft consists of these 10 cars. Look how the first four is running the bottom of the racetrack, and the next five or six is running the top of the racetrack. They run nose to tail down the straightaway. When they get to the corner, the first four goes to the inside. The next five goes to the outside. Jimmy Spencer has lost the draft, making it nine cars that are hooked on nose to tail. Larry Koch, the chief, did the caboose in the train. Uh-oh, there it goes Kawicki. <laughs> Ricky Rudd knew. He said, I knew I was supposed to go high. <laughs> and Morgan Shepard will come along behind Allen. And uh-oh, looks like Rudd may be hung out here. Inside Morgan's car, he's past Ricky. Now Morgan Shepard and Gary Cope. Up, uh, Ricky was able to slide in just in front of Mark Martin. So the leader is Sterling Marlin. Running second is Bill Elliott. Then comes Dale Earnhardt and Davey Allison. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series today at Talladega. Back after this.
looks like he's lost definitely somewhere. off the pace. He said he thought about a lot. Steve, what's the battery's dead? Battery's dead, okay. He said the car almost quit last time by. He thought of something in the motor, but I think it's a battery. Oh. They're trying to get a cart turned around so they can get a battery out of the bottom of the car. Do you have anything on Tony Glover's mustache, or do you want to do anything on that? Again at Talladega, I'm Bob Jenkins along with Ned Jerry, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch. 113 laps completed. There were nine cars in the lead draft. Now there are eight. And the one that is missing is Mark Martin. He's yeah. dropped off, not because he got out of the draft, but something's wrong with that car. Yeah, they think it might be the battery going dead on that car. Jerry, have you learned anything about Mark Martin's car? Well, about two laps ago, Ned, the car began to sputter, and then the car literally just almost quit running. He thought something was locking up in the rear end initially. They said, no, I think it's in the motor. And they looked, and they think they figured out it's the battery they think is going dead. So they, Steve Mill has had the crew get another battery from around one of their compartments here in the pits, and they are waiting for Mark to get a chance to come on the pit road. They're talking to him now. The car is still running, but apparently does not have a lot of amperage showing in the uh, gauges. And they're waiting to get a chance to bring him on the pit road and replace the battery. In the meantime, Mark Martin will just uh, do as best he can, but he's well, well off the pace. He will probably stay on the racetrack until he gets left. At that point in time, then he can come in and, and change the battery. But as long as he's the lead lap, he probably will stay out there and just hope for a caution play. Yeah, that would be a salvation right now. If the caution can, he's running by himself out there at the moment. There is a pack of cars coming up behind him. But you can see how far it is, that group of cars in front of him. And then it's about that far behind the group of cars behind him. So he's not getting much assistance, no assistance really from the draft. There's Dale Jarrett, Jimmy Spencer, a couple of Chevrolets. Yeah, they lost the lap of the, the lead group, lost the draft of the lead group a little while back. They just couldn't couldn't quite hang on. Jarrett's in 13th, Spencer in 14th. Now, both of them just took on fuel the last time. They did not change any tires. There's Ernie Urban and Dusty Wallace and Kyle Petty. Now, Urban did change tires on that last pit stop because he had only been on two the time before. So this car, so that pit trouble is going to be working pretty good. These three cars have been drafting on each other for the last several laps, trying to catch the lead draft, but they're quite a ways behind. Saw them putting another lap on Daryl Walter, who has had just a very, very disappointing afternoon. He's six laps down right now. A little action up front here, Bob. Dale Earnhardt is taking over the second position. Now Davey Allison goes around Bill Elliott on the outside. Elliott caught down on the inside. Will he be able to get back in line? He may drop all the way back to eight. Let's see. Ricky goes by, Morgan Shepard goes by, Rudd pulls up even with him. Meanwhile, Derek Cope is still, he's on the outside. I think Elliott's in trouble. And Cope, caution is on the racetrack. And caution is out for the third time today. So Mark Martin does get somewhat of a break, and it could be because of the number 49 car of Stanley Smith. He's going very slowly down the backstretch. Well, a tough break for the American batteries. Chevrolet, who had such a good qualifying effort and a very good run going here today. Here the car missing as it goes down the back stretch. So obviously, the motor has gone sour on that car. Well, let's take a look at our Western Auto Race recap. Sterling Marlin led 55 of the 115 laps. Two cautions for nine laps. We're in our third. 24 cars on the lead lap and six leaders, 15 lead changes. Average speed down now to 172. 0.89 miles an hour. That's about 20 miles an hour under what it was earlier. They're the drivers that have led the race and picked up five NASCAR Winston Cup bonus points, including the pole sitter Ernie Irvin. Those that have dropped out of the race, uh, mostly for mechanical problems, Charlie Glotz back in car number 90 has been our only accident victim as he hit the wall coming out of turn number two, but is okay. As far as the mechanic of the year standings are concerned, well, Tim Brewer from 
Bill Elliott's team is on the top, 10 points ahead of Larry McReynolds. Third is Steve Meal, Andy Petrie fourth, and Paul Andrews from Alan Kowicki's team is fifth in the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year standings. What do you think, Ned? They gonna change any tires this time or yeah, just guess? Yeah, I think they will. No, I believe they'll change tires this time. Well, are they going to pit? Well, they might not, because, uh, you know, they can make it on one more fuel stop if they run all the fuel out that's in their yep. tanks, but they're going to come in. They're yeah, going to they get come. some tires. Let's go to John Kernan on pit road for the call of the pit stop. Mike Beam and the crew are awaiting. They were talking it over, deciding to go either right side tires, left side tires. Now they will go with left sides only as the crew goes to work. Fill it up with gasoline. As you said, they'll have to make at least one more stop. Davey Allison is also in, and he's away. Davey must have just taken on fuel. Sterling, the work continuing. Now he has finished it down pit road. Let's go down further to pit road. And Mark Martin, pit and Jerry Park. Well, they have jacked the left side up and taken the left rear tire off. They're going to try to open the battery compartment. The battery now in a small compartment just in front of the left rear tire. Apparently what has happened here in the Valvoline Ford is that the alternator has quit working. Normally the gauge, as we have a tire rolling loose on pit road, a lot of activity down here, a flurry of activity. Apparently the gauge should read about 14 volts on the alternator. The alternator quit working, the gauge read reading 10 volts, 9 volts, and it was draining the battery. Now the alternator had quit, that's no problem. They put a fresh battery in and it should get into the end of the race. They'll have to work on the alternator problem next week. But obviously it costing some time. It could have been a lot worse for Mark Martin had the caution not come out. They were waiting to get a caution and not lose a lap. Now they are sitting in the pits. The old battery is out. Steve Mill working in the left rear wheel well, trying to get the new battery in, getting the plate put back, getting it taped in position, the cables on. And Mark Martin just might survive without losing a lap as the pace car now in turn three. They are almost finished putting the battery in the car. And the Valvoline team, a winner just one week ago, may catch a break here at Talladega. Bob? Yeah, it is. The pace car is moving, of course, uh, rather slowly at about 80 miles an hour through the third and fourth turns. Bob, I'm sure that fans look at him and say, hey, when I raise the hood on my car, the battery is up under the hood. Well, it's at a different place on these race cars, and the big reason they put it back there, one is, in case of a crash, they can protect it some, but more than that, puts that weight of that battery back there on the left side near the rear of the car. Still under caution at Talladega, Alabama in the Winston 500. You're watching live coverage here on ESPN. Back right after this. You're doing a marvelous job, by the way. I think they changed tires. So did the level car. He was he was up there and he he dropped way back. It looked like that Elliott's car was not quite. I mean the chassis was a little bit off there. And probably made he probably good. changed four. See, Earnhardt came in thirteenth. I mean came in third. Came out thirteenth, which is unusual for them. But I'm sure they changed four tires. Yeah. Well, we can mention in that breath that uh, both uh, Gant and uh, Mast have re-signed through 1994 with U.S. Tobacco. Mm -hmm. Schrader's car is... Uh, slow. Slow. <laughs> okay. Crack back, Mikey. Never mind. Mark Martin's back in now to change tires, I guess. Now there are 23 cars in the lead. Line. Track backs are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Setting up a Winston Cup car on a speedway can be extremely difficult because the rules limit what you can do. In years past, if you wanted to change the downforce on the back of the car, you could manipulate the spoiler up or back. But now the rules significantly limit your access to spoiler movement. So what many of the crews have decided to do is change the front of the car in something called fender tuck. Let me show you what I mean. This rod here attaches from the fender to the frame. There are five holes here on a plate welded to the, to the fender. 
So you can actually adjust the rod forward a quarter of an inch, which will bow the fender out. If you turn the fender out, it catches more air in the front of the car, or stalls more air is the term that's used, creating more downforce on the front of the car and making the rear of the car looser, and vice versa. If you pull the rod back, you're bringing the fenders in, allowing air to slip by cleanly, less downforce up front, and making the car tighter. So a minor adjustment here in the fender tuck can have a major impact on a car's handling on a speedway. Quick lesson there in the aerodynamics from uh, Dr. Punch in our track fact, just uh, giving you an indication of how a slight bow in the chassis can make the difference in uh, two, three, four, five miles an hour. By the way, who won the car at Martinsville? Did we ever find that? Uh, yes. I'll tell you that. Say something. There's Mark Martin uh, Thank you. coming out of the pits. He's going to be in 23rd place, guys. Last car in the lead lap after his problems. He came back in and changed tires. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention uh, last week's winner when we get the results of this week's, but since you asked, the uh, Gillette Halfway Challenge winner last week at Martinsville was Darlene Weaver, a 27-year-old housewife from Dayton, Ohio. Right, Darlene. Way to go. We'll have today's winner hopefully uh, in a few laps. The crowd rises to its feet. There is a huge crowd on hand here at Talladega. Now, Dale Earnhardt came, went into pits in third, came out 13th. Bill Elliott came out in, what, about 18th or 18th position. So they changed all four tires, so they got some work to do to get back up towards the front. Track position, very important, but those two guys have elected to give up track position to get some fresh tires. Davey Allison will have the lead as they come down to get the green flag, and Ricky Rudd is running second. So Al Kowicki laying back just a little bit so he could get a nice running start to catch these guys who did not want to get left in second gear. And it worked for him. He's right up on the back bumper of the 21 car. Oh, he tried to go by on the outside. They almost crashed. Ooh, Morgan's car, I don't know if, if he didn't know if he was out there. Or if his car Ernie Irvin's car. Ernie Irvin's car is slow down in one and two. It just did not go when he stepped on the accelerator. In fact, it looked like it may have died. He is running very slowly down the back stretch. Now beginning to gain some momentum. But Ernie Irvin is falling way, way behind. He has definitely lost the draft if he has the car up, if he gets it up to speed again, he will have lost the draft, and that's going to be very expensive. Ricky Rudd is as, for, is as uh, close to the lead as he has had since September of 1991. Rudd has not led a lap in 92. He's second right now. Look at the scramble for position behind him. Bernhardt and Brent Jeff Bodine almost getting together, coming off the fourth corner. That's Jeff in the red car, Jerry Cope in the red, white, number 10. Earnhardt heads for the bottom of the track while Cope remains up on top along with Jeff. And some good action behind them. You guys, this is the place where you hold your breath for a crash. Yeah, you hold on. Yeah, for several laps as they jump around. You have the uh, lap cars in there that are trying to maintain position, and the lead car is trying to See, get Earn up through there. Earnhardt had to go back to the end of that line. Could not get by. Here comes Harry again along. Maybe he can latch on to somebody and work his way to the front. Let's get a report on Ernie Irvin from Dr. Punch. Just told his crew minutes ago, Bobby, thought the transmission was about to lock up in the car. Then suddenly it flew out of gear coming off turn two. That's when he saw him suddenly slow. He has been able to jam it back in gear and collect some speed back, but obviously he's lost a lot of distance. And most importantly, he has lost the draft. And he has lost the opportunity, it would appear, for the Unical bonus money of $22,800. It'll increase by $7,600 for the Coca-Cola 600. The field summary coming up here. Watch for your favorite driver. Where he is running, where he was running last lap. First three out front, three-car draft for the lead. It's Allison, Rudd, and Marlin. Well, these guys would love to just pull away from the crowd, and the worst they could do at the end of the race would be third. Yep. So here comes that big bunch back there. Bill Elliott there was in 18th position. He has now moved up to the 16th position, but he's still mired back in a big pack of traffic. 23 cars on the lead lap. The last car on the lead lap is Mark Martin, who changed the battery during that most recent caution period. Jimmy Means is out, so is Greg Sachs. And 36 through 40 are also out of the race, including Glotz back, our only accident victim for the day. 124 laps are completed here at Talladega. 188 make up this NASCAR Winston Cup. Winston 500.
Get her on the bottom. Yeah, looks like yeah. it. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, yeah. please. He's coming around. Can I get in here? They got new tires. They're going hard in there. That's really tough. Talladega, Alabama. Here's how things stand right now. Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd, and Sterling Marlin are in the lead draft, first, second, and third. Then here's four, five, six, seven, and eight running together, led by Earnhardt. Then comes Kowicki. There's Bill Elliott. Derek Koch, who's done a great job, having a great race, and also uh, uh, Rusty Wallace there. And a host of others. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Elliott's felt down on the inside there once again. Can't find the hole to get back up in there. Gordon Shepard wouldn't let him in there. Remember a song? Remember a song by the Sensations, Benny, back in the 60s called Let Me In, We You? That's what yeah. Bill is singing right now. <laughs> yeah, I remember the song. Morgan Shepard and Rusty Wallace right beside him. John Kernan has a report on pit strategies from here on. John? Well, you see Larry McReynolds just walking away from talking with Mike Beam. Now, what they've done, Larry's been down to talk to Gary Dehart. They will pit about uh, 10, 15 laps from the end for gas. Right now, those three cars, Davey, Ricky, and Sterling, are planning to run nose to tail, not try and dice for the lead among themselves. They want to pull away from that second pack of cars. Now, one thing that uh, has taken a lot of strategy to build up here, Sterling's running a little bit hot as he's running in the third position, running about 210 degrees. If it gets too hot, then the order is for the the other two guys to let him get out in front and get some clean air into his radiator. Of course, when that moment comes, we'll see if that works, but that's the plan right now. I just want to be interested to see if this three can break away from Dale Earnhardt because he's the guy that's leading that second group. If Earnhardt can get someone tucked up on the rear bumper, it's possible he could run this front three down. We'll have to see how it works out. I think that's going to be a tough chore there being for him to do because they are really working the draft in the ultimate way. Meanwhile, back here, Earnhardt, now he might have him a partner there with Alan Kowicki. They have broken away just a little bit from that pack back there, so uh, he might be able to do it. It's going to be a tough chore. Closes up right on the back bumper burn -up. That's what people have to do is get nose to tail and run close to run these guys down. Well, congratulations to Michael Bow or Bowie, B-O-W-E, 38-year-old carpenter from Pewaukee, Wisconsin, who is today's winner in the Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. He correctly identified Sterling Martin as the leader of the halfway lap, and he won his Chevrolet Blue in the C-34. Entries now being accepted for the next race. Call 1-900-436-7000. The call will cost you 95 cents, and you must be 18 years of age or older to enter. 
or you can send your name and telephone number to the Gillette Halfway Challenge Post Office Box 1868, South Hackensack, New Jersey, 07606. You ever been to Pewaukee, Benny? Uh, I don't know. Where is it? I think it's up by Milwaukee. I've been to Milwaukee. Yep. It's about 45 minutes away from Milwaukee, according to Mike Wells, our director, who grew up in Milwaukee. So you should know. Okay. Here's the scramble. And Mark Martin leading ben, the King and Buddy Baker and several others. It's Dave Bader. That's the 16th car on the inside. Wally Dolan back. Dick Britton, the stickers car on the outside there. Great mass. And all of those are, are in the lead lap, except that Harry Gant is not, of course. He is one lap down. We might make mention that both Harry Gant and Rick Mast have re-upped with their U.S. tobacco sponsorship until 1994. So you'll continue to see Mast and Gant running in their Skull cars through 1994. And Harry's going to be an old man by then. You better draw Social Security. 132 laps completed. Out front, it's Allison, Rudd, and Marlin in the Winston 500. How they doing, man? Uh, that pack back there. 60 and then pack up the crunch around about 4940. Mm to Talladega, Alabama, where ESPN is presenting live coverage of the Winston 500 from the Talladega Super Speedway. And performing super at this point is Davey Allison, along with Ricky Rudd and Sterling Marlin. Those three cars running by themselves in a lot of race track back to fourth place Dale Earnhardt. John Kernan has a report on pit road. Well, Bobby, you say that Davey is running super. Hey, it's got to be the shoes. Remember a couple weeks ago at North Wilkesville on a pit stop, Joey Knuckles, while running around from one side of the car to the other, lost a shoe. Well, Mike Kofer, the kicker for the San Francisco 49ers, who also happens to be a North Carolina State graduate and NASCAR fan, was watching. And a couple of days later, Joey got these shoes in the mail. You'll see they've got the regular laces there and also some Velcro snaps here. It says, guaranteed not to lose these shoes. Now let's go down pit road to Jerry Punch. We talked about drivers and teams trying to do some things to change their luck. Take a look at the Kodak team. You see the four car? That's Ernie Irvin now. He's a little different. If he were to climb out of that car, you might not recognize him. He is minus the mustache. In fact, everyone in the crew here have shaved the beards, mustache, essentially all the facial hair off today as they are trying to change their luck. And, of course, one crew member back in Abington, Virginia, by the name of Mike Harris, who is a machinist, is breathing somewhat of a sigh of relief. He promised the rest of the crew that if they came back here and sat on the pole and won the race, he would shave every single bit of body hair he has, including hair, eyebrows, mustache, everything. So even though Ernie is still on the lead lap, Mike, back up in Abington, may be sighing a little bit in relief. I didn't even recognize Tony Glover. He's had that mustache for 15 years, and it's gone. I didn't recognize Larry McClure, the owner of the car. I'm telling you, these guys look so strange. They all had mustaches. And Ernie, I went to the driver's meeting this morning, 
There's Glover. <laughs> Doesn't he look different without Yeah, he sure on? does. <laughs> He's sticking that tongue out there. He can't feel that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question at this point is, are these three cars pulling away from fourth on back? Uh, the interval between Davy Allison, Ricky Rudd, and Sterling Marlin, and this other group of cars. Now, we have uh, timed some laps here you, for you, and uh, going to try to make that determination for you in a big A auto parts on track interval summary. We timed laps 128 through 132. Allison, 49.4 to 49 and a half, very consistent. Earnhardt a little bit slower, and in fact, the interval uh, increased from 2.5 seconds to 3.5 seconds during those five laps. So they gained one second in five laps. Or Earnhardt. They're definitely pulling away. They're doing such a great job of drafting up there. They are changing positions. Although Earnhardt, that, that, he hasn't changed positions either, but he's just not leading that pack of cars back there as fast as Davey Allison is leading the country. Let me correct something, guys. The, the machinist who is standing by back in Abington, Virginia, the Kodak crew, that is Mike Hips, otherwise known as Hippie back there. He's a guy sitting here watching the ESPN telecast right now with a safety razor and a can of shaving foam, hoping maybe his driver will win or maybe hoping he won't win. I'm not really sure, but anyway, he's watching this back there in Virginia. Bob? Glad to have him and all of the other ESPN Winston Cup uh, spectators, viewers watching our live coverage of this event today. Here's another auto light field summary for you. There you see the top three and then that other group of cars on back, including Earnhardt and Kowicki. And look at the scramble for position. Bill Elliott is trying his best. He's up on the high side, but here he sees that Jeff Bodine down on the inside. And they are really doing some scrambling around for position back there. Elliott feels that he has the fastest car of that group. If he could just get up there, and he has worked and worked and worked, and is gradually moving up there, and he could pull down faster, I believe, if he yeah. could get up there. It probably helped everybody if they just yeah. knew that they, he wanted to get up there and, and pull him around. But naturally, you're going to be hesitating to give up that position. I don't understand exactly what happened because Kowicki was right by Earnhardt just a lap or so ago, and now all of a sudden Kowicki is back four or five cars. Rusty Wallace has moved up behind Dale Earnhardt. Well, he was Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty went down to the inside, as Derek Pope has done now. And here's Jeff Bodine. They found the groove down on the inside that they can work pretty good. First passing we've seen that we just stuck down on the inside. Boy, that's a great shot, isn't it? Oof. Ooh, where's Kyle Petty out there? Surely he's not still on the outside. <laughs> well, he was. There wasn't much space between that car and the wall, but somehow Kyle was in there. Mark Martin has gotten back up to speed, fellas. Yep. He had dropped back, but now he's right back up there in the thick of that group. Yeah, he changed the battery and then dropped back again, but he's moving again. Mark Martin. Meanwhile, it is still the same. Very patient driving here on behalf of Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd, and Sterling Marlin as they're willing at this time to just draft each other and keep everybody behind him. We'll be back with more in a moment. Back off. Huh? Nah. We can, we can get by. Okay. 
Major development while we were away. Ricky Rudd, first of all, lost second place, got out of the draft. Next thing, he was in the wall in turn number two, sliding down the banking. He has the car headed in the right direction again. Here's what happened. The car slowed. He was going slow, and all of a sudden, it just goes sideways. It's like he had a flat tire or something. He goes up, kisses the wall, comes back down. There was a big gap between he and the that other big group of cars. He was lucky that you know, those other cars were coming along. And he comes down to the inside. Benny, I believe he did have a tire going down. That's what caused him to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah there it is. The right, right rear tire. tire. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what that did, of course, was uh, essentially eliminate rut from uh, contention. But it also brought out another caution, and that's going to close up the field. And it let them make that last pit stop. One more pit stop. They needed for fuel. Now they can make it. They don't have to worry about stopping the field. And will they change tires or will they just gas and go? We'll wait and see. Some will do one, some will do the other. The base car has the field in the third turn now. And they will be coming down for pit stops on lap number 144. And meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has stayed on the racetrack because he legally cannot pit. The pit road is still closed because the pace car hasn't been by to open it up. So he's got to ride around on a flat tire and probably shake the car all two pieces. Fellas, this was a break for Ernie Urban, who had the problem on the restart. He was running back there by himself, totally out of the draft, and he was about to go a lap down, and now he gets to catch up to the field. Yep, he was 23rd, the last car on the lead lap. Big break for Ernie. Here they come, guys, toward uh, Pitt Road. John Curtin will go to you first. Davey Allison's crew are waiting him. First, they were going to only take on gasoline. Then they decided to ride tires because they needed a can and a half of fuel. Now, apparently, they just need one can of fuel because they decided to make it a gas and go only. Davey is in waiting, waiting, waiting. That last drop of fuel goes in. He guns the engine and is away. Davey is down now. Also, Sterling Marlin on Trent Road. He has changed right side tires in the way. And now down to Jerry Punch. Well, right the exact same thing down here. John Earnhardt has already gone. Hasn't Phil Elliott. One of the drivers, now Wallace was up to third, Earnhardt is fourth. Now one of the cars who did need to come in for a car change, and I think you heard him say up there a minute ago, a big break for Ernie Irvin. This Kodak Chevrolet crew now have changed right side tires. They will come around and change left side tires. One tire beginning to roll away across pit road and now being grabbed by one of the friends next door, the Goodrich crew. Left side tires going on. They have made a catch in Justin here. Back to the car, and Ernie Irvin is down and away. So we are under caution here at Talladega Super Speedway. As laps are winding down, what should be the final pit stop, we're set for green flag racing the checkered flag. Back with more after this. Jeff, Waltrip, and Davey. Second set of middle bill boards, got them. Okay. Middle bill boards. Middle bill boards. Yep. As far as I know. <laughs> After I taped those cords up on the the wall, we haven't had any problem with that monitor going out. Right. I quit stepping on them. I've done that many, many times. I remember once and long, long time ago, I unplugged the monitor and people came up trying to find what the problem Rudd's was. Rudd's about to go a lap down. Back to you is going I'm sorry? Mm, yes, I think we do. I'll turn it on channel 5, who, which is he's supposed to be on. Okay. Benny, you want to talk to him? Who? Davey. Davey? Wait a minute, not yet. Not last week. <coughs> is it ready to talk? All righty. Under our fourth caution of the day, with 145 laps out of 188 completed in the Winston 500, it's Allison, Elliott, Wallace, Earnhardt, and Shepard. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires.
By Pram Oil Builders, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Richard Petty and STP, available at retail and video stores nationwide. Pit stops have been completed. Davey Allison will be the leader when we come back to green. Davey Allison, this is Benny Parsons up in ESPN Control. You read me? Trying to establish radio contact here with Davey Allison. This again. Davey Allison, this is Benny Parsons. Do you read me? Uh, not making it uh, to the truck where it's supposed to be. So, why'd you give me that bad radio? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wasn't well. my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Davey has to be thinking about the $100,000 from RJR, but more than that, he's thinking about one. Now, he's thinking about that Budweiser car right behind him. That's what he's thinking about. <laughs> Yeah, first you got to win the race to win the money. And Davey Allison will have Bill Elliott and uh, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt right behind him when we go green. We'll be right back. No. Must not like you, Benny. No, he's going to get ready to see him. Bless you, Benny. Join us for ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston 500. The green flag is about to come out. Davey Austin's bringing him down. He cannot accelerate to when he gets to where the sign says time. Right there, he can start accelerating. He will. That's when the green flag comes out. 41 laps to go as the green comes out and the racing resumes. Two Fords, a Pontiac, a Chevy, and another Ford in the top five. Martin is sixth, Dale Jarrett is seventh. And in the eighth place is the car number 22 of Sterling Marlin. The guy who's run up front all day. So he's been with this a little bit longer, perhaps changed some tires. Well, he just took on gas. Yeah, has been quietly competitive in the top ten uh, most of the day. And Wicky went three abreast coming off the second quarter. He's back in the back line, desperate to get up to the front. There he's on the inside of Baker. Gordon Shepard on the inside of Rusty Wallace taking over position. Shepard now moves up into what, the third position. And Sterling Marlin also finding room in the draft. We saw Ricky Rudd flash by our speed shot. He did lose a lap changing that rear tire and trying to fix some of the sheet metal damage that he had in the right rear. He is a lap down. Tough break for Rudd. He's had a rough year this year. So now there are only 22 cars. I say only. Oh, that's a lot of cars in good. the lead lap. 22 out of the 40 that started. Still on the lead lap. 148 laps. Inside Morgan Shepherds. Sit go for it. see Morgan I mean, uh, Mark Martin's car. He apparently is off the pace again a little bit again as Jeff Ladine goes on the inside. And ooh, they get awfully close. There's Derek Copa on the outside. And the car number 16 of Wally Dolan back Jr. Going to follow Mark Martin there for a little bit. Tight racing there between uh, Derek Cope and Jeff Bodine. Certainly is. Here's the roof cam. Jeff 
Hung on the inside. Can't, he doesn't have a dancing partner, so to the back he'll go. He moves up behind Dallenbach and will draft along with that group of cars. Right now, there are five cars that are trying to break away out front. As we go down the back stretch with Jeff Rodin. Followed by Kenny Schrader. Even Hensley, who was taking the lead lap all day, just making an unscheduled pit stop going out of the pitch right now. He'd be lucky to stay in the lead lap. He is the winning second place car. Five cars have broken away now in the lead draft. They are Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, and Sterling Marlin. Another field summary for you, sponsored by Auto Light. And a little bit of racetrack back to Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett. They're hooked up in a draft trying to catch that lead Fossil, but they're staying in single trial at lead Fossil. Oh, and it's going to be tough for anybody to catch them. There's Jarrett and uh, Rusty, but now Kyle Petty and Derek Pope and several others are catching them. Wally Dolan back there, moving the low side to join Mark Martin draft. Their teammates, of course. Both those cars owned by Jack Rouse. Seat Rusty, Dale, Kyle Petty, Derek Pope, Mark Martin. Now they got uh, Rusty and Jared have a few more cars. If they stay in line, I wonder if that might help them to get that lead pack. Just two of them could do it. In fact, they were losing right now. Five cars singing their own song, and Dale Earnhardt feeling like a renegade as he is sandwiched right in the middle of two Fords in front and two Fords behind. <laughs> a lone Chevrolet in the middle of it. He pulls on the inside. He looks on the inside of Elliott. Don't they make it? They don't, they don't make the pass. Dale Earnhardt has won three of the last four races here at Talladega. His streak was interrupted. This race last year when Harry Gant won. He won both races in 1990 and won in 91. Gordon Shepard did and so Marlin somewhat of a little hand signal there. So I'd like for you to stay back there. But I uh, don't think Marlin wants to stay back there. He started to run right on the bottom of the racetrack, all the way down through the corner. It's obvious that the fastest way around the racetrack as long as they stay in line. That's a little different from the way they were running earlier. It's like they trying to, to break the draft there, going a little bit low, but right now I, I would imagine these drivers are trying to figure out what they can do. He tried that move. Is that what I need to do on the last lap? He's making Elliott at least think that's what he's going to do on the last lap. He may do something else. He's going to do several things in the next 35 or 40 laps to get Elliott trying to figure out what he's going to do. Few mind games being played. Davey Allison, two wins at Daytona and North Wilkesboro. Six top to five finishes. Led a lap in seven of the eight races. Didn't last week at Martinsville. And has led the most lap in three races in 1992. And is a point atop the point standings after eight races. We'll take another break and be back with more live from Tomodega Super Speedway. You show Benny's piece if we do Speed Week. <laughs> See all those Nissan crashes again, too. Yeah, pretty good idea. Yeah. They're losing ground, aren't they, Ned? Yeah, they are, definitely. The five are, you mean? Yeah, the, no, the, no, the, the second other group. Pack, second. The bunch. Ooh, yeah. there goes Pratt. There you go. Get it out of the way. <laughs> and all day at the speedway tomorrow.
It's a five-car draft for the lead at Talladega, Alabama Super Speedway in the Winston 500 with the wet laps winding down. It's Allison, Elliott, Earnhardt, Shepard, and Marlin. What are you trying to do, say laps winding all the same time? You can do it. David Riddle, crew chief on the 28 car, and I don't think that we'll be seeing any more pit stops. Do you and Ann? No, they, they won't have to stop as far as fuel is concerned. And everybody seems to be pretty content there just running in that line. Won't be long until they'll start mixing it up and trying to get track position. For more on the strategy, let's go to the pits and Gary Tucker. Well, gentlemen, in keeping with our theme of needing a dance partner and having to be able to utilize help in the draft here, Dale Earnhardt must feel awfully lonely out there. In fact, the crew member told me a minute ago, or the lone bow tie banner waver out there. And as the laps wind down, maybe our only hope is that maybe some of those Ford guys, and there are four of them around, it's more like an ambush than a race. Some of those Ford guys may get a little greedy because a couple of those guys have yet to win in 1992. And if they get greedy and mess up, maybe we'll have a shot to go to victory lane. That may be our only chance. Bob? We'll see as we get closer to the end of the race. 156 completed right now. Well, Charlie Marlin has never won. He's never the only, won anyway. only driver in that group that has not won a Winston Cup race. From inside Morgan Shepard's car, he's currently running fourth in the Citgo Ford. That's Earnhardt, the black Ian Goodrich Shirley, correct in front. He's third. Where the others in? Paul High Tamara. There's Sterling Marlin, the brother of Ned, the fact that he's never won in the Cup race. He's got the horse to do it today if he can just get in the right situation. Yeah, he's been strong all day long, and people are predicting, hey, it's not going to be long until he'll win. Here's a battle between Derek Cope and Kyle Petty. Cope's car has been really going high the last few laps. He was up there in about eighth position, but now has dropped back to the fifth position. Although the first five are running in a draft, nose to tail, there is some side-by-side -side action here with Ernie Irvin and Alan Kowicki, among others, using the low side. Make that nice for their coach, Kyle Petty is in camp now. And so Ernie Irvin, the pole should have just briefly on the inside of Jeff Bodine. We're in, right on top of Jeff Bodine's car, the roof cam. He's got Rick Mance behind him, and behind Ernie Irvin is Alan Kowicki. Ollie Gollum back drafting on Alan. Ernie has been running that low line. He picked up several positions while ago, but then now he's losing the back as uh, those other drivers running that high line. Just got such a good run coming off the turn. The RPMs are up. The car's not pinched down as much, and uh, they're able to pull up. And Dick Triple also running in that group, along with Fred Bodine and King Richard Petty. Ted Musgrave having some trouble as that car has slowed. And it looks like it's coming into the pit. And he has driven a great race today. Ted Musgrave, who was a rookie last year, finished second to Bobby Hamilton in the rookie standing. And he's been up there in the lead lap all day long. But now, unfortunately, it looks like he'll go a lap down. The Jasper engines. Right foot, look like people right foot tires, but see how low the, yeah, it is. You can see it flapping. You can see it flapping out. You can see how low the right side was. That's great. That's great. Let's go to the pits and John Turner. Benny, you have got sharp eyes, sharp as an eagle, as my mother uh, always said. Yes, the right front tire is shredded, and he will come down pit road and likely will lose a lap. I was talking with him earlier today. He said, man, he said, I would love to have a top five finish. But there go Davey Allison in that front draft of five cars as Ted heads down pit road. Losing a lap to the first five. Yeah, for an old guy, he's got uh, pretty good eyes. <laughs> We'll take another break and then come back with a field summary from the Winston 500 at Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. We'll be right back. Boxing. Obviously, Wells has talked you into that one. <laughs> now we got to go do Speed Week. It'll be on at 7:30 next Saturday, as usual. Is 
upset that in that red car that looked like. Music means what? ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. And tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, you'll see the Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Houston Astros from the Astrodome. Exclusive coverage. Sunday Night Baseball tonight at 8 o'clock. How about 9 o'clock on Thursday evening? Get set for some great top-ranked boxing featuring Ted Foster. It's at 9 o'clock. I'm sorry, Todd Foster. Thursday at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. There they are, the top five still running in the draft. Still running in the same position. They haven't changed yet. They still got about 24 laps to go, Bob. So I guess they're going to be content here. Just to run more 25 laps, actually. When they came by that time. I thought maybe you'd use Bob Scott with a minute No, I'm a head brain face. <laughs> it's <laughs> catching. <laughs> Here's the auto life field summary that we promised you. This is how they were running last lap. And second five. Marlon and Martin Wallace in 11 through 15, including Dave Jarrett. And they trickled this wrong. Dave Jarrett took their big place for the last 10 laps. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> well, maybe his score down there is hitting the button a little later. Yeah, yeah. That, that could be. Yeah. This, of course, is taken from the from the scoring stand, and it depends on when they hit that button when you come by. And, and they're about from uh, sixth place through about 20th place. They're all running in a line back there. So that could really truly be yeah. just when they hit the button as the cars went by. I just had to bring come up for Dale. <laughs> <laughs> to his defense. <laughs> there he is, running right. Mark Martin is pulling this group. Rusty Wallace is in seventh place. Jarrett's eighth. Jarrett third there, right there in ninth. And then behind him is Jeff Rodine. You can see what a line of cars. All of those cars are in the lead lap. That is six through 20th. I think we have uh, 20, <laughs> 21 cars here in the lead lap. Yeah, they made it a nine car. He's the last car on the lead left. And here's Kyle Petty trying to go on the outside of Mast, and he may have Mast on the outside drive. Oh, yeah. Richard Petty, the king, is right in that group of cars. He stayed in the lead lap all day. I'll tell you, it's been a while since Richard has been in the lead lap at the end of the race. It's good to see him up there running, staying in the lead lap. Well, the last three short tracks we've done, Bristol, oh, North Wilkesboro, and Martinsville, but just early on, the first few laps, yeah. Richard had some problems. And and three races in a row. Okay, that's the battle for the last place on, on the lead lap. Dave Mater uh, looked like was trying to pass Richard Petty there and, and take over that 19th or 20th position. That's how much racetrack there is between that group and the five that are running up front. Ricky Rudd's going two laps down now. He cut a tire, hit the wall, and uh, slid down the banking a few laps ago. Well, that's a break for him. He was in second place when that happened. And now he's just... Uh, Right on down the line. The other car with that blue car that we saw was Dave Marcus. He's still in the race. As they said, the STG car. Coming out of Hustle, Alabama. Alabama. Southeast Technical. They're all trying to figure out now what can I do to win this race? That's exactly what's going to Every one of their minds, their minds, is what can I do? Do I need to team up with Sterling Mall says, do I need to team up with Morgan? Or when he moves out, do I need to go up and get on Earnhardt? And Earnhardt's, you know, they're all trying to figure out what do I need to do. Getting an interval here from a speed shot. 2.4 seconds. That was back to that uh, Dave Marcus and Ricky Rudd. Here comes the pictures from the car. Yeah, they're, they're continuous but losing ground to that top five. You know, I raced down here since 1970 through 1988, and I was in this position several times, uh, I don't know, maybe eight, five or six times. I was in exactly this position, trying to figure out right now, what do I need to do? And you know what? I never figured it out. <laughs> Everybody says, how do you win a holiday? I don't have a clue. <laughs> yeah, you just, you, you got to, whatever 
circumstances present themselves on that last lap or the last couple of laps, and you try to take advantage of them. And of course, most of your races race. were without restricted plates, right? Yeah, that's the most now did you run with the restricted plates? Then? I did. Back in the early 70s, we had restricted plates, and then mm -hmm. in 1987, once again, we had restricted plates. Now, here's from the lead group back to the second. 11.4 seconds. Wow. That second group is big. It, it is. There it is. Wow. Ooh, Ernie Urban and Coke. Coke get together a little bit. Ernie's still running that bottom line down there. He and Alan Kowick here determined to stay down there and try to pass those guys on the bottom. This has been an amazingly safe race. Charlie Glotzbach has had the most serious contact with any wall, and he's okay. Ricky Rudd, the only other one. Back in a moment. As you can tell Brad Hinton that I said his weather forecast was right on. <laughs> Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. It's Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, and Sterling Marlin, the top five running in a draft. And the Western Auto mechanic of the race is Mike Bean from Sterling Marlin's crew. Crew chief on the Marshall House, Fort Thunderbird, out of Junior Johnson's shop. All those points, of course, accumulate during the year to the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year Award that will be handed out at the NASCAR Banquet in New York City in December. That's Harry Gant, last year's winner in the Skull Bandits, won another lap down. He's now two laps down, and it's just amazing what wind tunnel time means. This car was put together, as I said earlier, I think Jerry or John said put together, didn't have a chance to take it to the wind tunnel and work out the small details and render the car yeah, he just was not uh, competitive from the drop of the green flag and is in 26th position. There's still 20 cars in the lead lap. There are five of them. Can't even hang on to the, to the lead wrap here. Inside Morgan Shepard's car once again. This is go forward. Wood Brothers shot out of Stewart, Virginia. running as close as, as you can, but they're probably backing up just a little bit and keeping the, the, thing, the engine as cool as they can, get as much air as possible through the grill, but yet try to get the maximum speed out of the car. Well, there has been some jockeying going on back there from the uh, sixth place on back. These five cars have been content just to sit there and run for, what, 25 or so laps. Now that the back group behind them this year been doing some jockeying there. Still trying to figure it out, Benny, what they want to do. It's not time yet, though. They still got, uh, they're working the 174th lap now, and the race is 188, so they got 14 more laps to go. Yep. Dale Earnhardt's record here at Talladega is impressive. 26 starts, 5 wins, 12 top fives, and as we came into this event, that won 3 of the last 4. 
took over the Winston Cup points lead after this race in 1991, and he never let go. So obviously he knows what to do on that last lap. He's been the thing five times. That is going to be a scramble in that gas pump. Percentage-wise, you would think that the Ford win streak is going to continue because Dale is carrying the GM banner all alone in those top five. But hey, you never know what's going to happen here in the last few laps. Well, that's right. You remember, Davey Allison beat him yesterday in the IROC race by about right. three or four feet. So you could see a, a replay of that. And they're by themselves on another car in sight. But here comes that other group. Here they come. They come. There, they, there are. they are. Boy, I tell you, it took a long time for them to get there. There were five cars that were about to break away. Alan Kalicki tried to get down on the inside a little bit ago. He was right there running in eighth place. That didn't work. He's down on the inside again. It's not going to work this time for him. It doesn't look like. But Ernie Irvin has moved up to lead this pack now. And Mark Martin is running seventh. Dale Jarrett is eighth. They've been trying to pull away from that group back there, but just haven't been able to break away from them. Ernie Irvin was a pole sitter. He's now in sixth spot. Irvin, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Gary Coach, Jeff Rodin, there's the Wiki. And Jimmy Spencer, some of our spotters a moment ago was, had heard something in the Ooh, oh, trouble. Look out. Jimmy Spencer is the car in trouble. Car lifting. Oh, but it did not go over. Unbelievable. Whoa. Oh. Unbelievable. The car was had to go oh. over. And look, just put it in gear and go on, Jimmy. What a ride that had to be. Gee, whiz, I could not believe that that car got as far over as it did. See? And settled back down. They put it in his car. He's going on. He may not lose a lap. No, he, he, uh, he gets from back out on the pavement. He's going to be okay. He'll stay in the lead lap. You remember Davey Allison rolled over early in the Daytona 500 a couple of years ago and didn't lose a lap. And boy, Jimmy Spencer, that was unbelievable. Watch this. Here's Spencer and Dolan back. And Wally, let's see what happens here. Looks like Spencer, uh, some slight. Yeah, oh, I see. Don back got bumped by Kyle Petty. Just barely got bumped by Kyle Petty. Look at you're up on the left nose of the car. It comes back down, wants to flip over, but it don't. It stays down. One thing that helped it from not flipping over, he got to going in the forward position again, and the air helped to keep it on the ground. That's right. If he came down on sideways, the car would start rolling. But since he came down in forward position. Jimmy puts it in gear and drives off. Okay, do we make pit stops, guys? There will be 11 laps to go when they come back. He's driving it around to the pits. <laughs> that is a good question. What do you think? Will they pit? Only 11 laps to go. What do you think? Guys, are they well, going to pit? What do you think? No, this they car did hasn't not. come out yet. Oh, Jimmy Spencer did go a lap down when he came into the pits there, but uh, the pace car now just about to come out, so they can't come into the pits until the next lap. Oh, and Buddy Baker has a problem also. It's like a wheel bearing. He's lost a wheel bearing on that car. See the, the fire? He has. He's lost a wheel bearing, and the wheel's about to fly off, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does fly off. Remember at uh, Michigan a couple of years ago, that wheel went rolling down the back right away on fire? The hub? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly the problem he's got there. Fifth caution flag of the afternoon waves over Talladega Super Speedway for an accident involving Jimmy Spencer taking the ride of his life, perhaps, but he's okay. He drove the Molly Black Gold car back into the pit area. And you can see that a couple of members of Dale Earnhardt's crew have come over to find out how Jimmy is after that very scary ride. This is what happened on the backstretch. We'll be back in just a moment. There's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Change his underwear and he'll be right back out there. <laughs> In the aerodynamic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look, Look at all, all, all I'm all trying fake to fake out. out. Yeah. They're not coming in the pits. Yeah. Oh, no way. 
10 laps to go. We'll be jamming some gears now. A bunch of gears missed on this. Probably around the base of main is over at maybe and lose the cylinder. That last place man don't have enough to lose. That's the last two or three. They come in and get some new tires. They might pick up some positions. Who's got Davey in the pool? I do. Don't I? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Field still under caution as we resume our ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston 500 from Talladega. Now, Jimmy Spencer had a scary ride, and this is what Bobby Hamilton saw as we watch from his in-car camera. He's right behind Kyle Petty. There's Spencer on the inside of it. And Dollenbach goes down, just touches Spencer's car, and away he goes. Wally did a nice job saving his car because he was sideways. He really did. He might have just went up into Kyle just a little bit as they came off of that turn and uh, just caused him to go down into Spencer. Spencer was going up. And, and these guys chose not to pit. Yep. They decided to stay on the racetrack and not give up that track position for tires. Uh, they're able to, the tires are good enough. They can run uh, 60, 70 laps on them, still run wide open, so they stay on the racetrack. 19 cars in the lead lap. I did see Rick Mast come into the pits. He is currently 19th. He had nothing to lose. Don't blame him. When they come down, they will complete lap 179, and that means there will be nine more laps to go, and obviously at least one more of those will be under caution. So eight laps of green flag racing to decide who's going to win it. If this guy wins it, he's got two legs up on the Winston Millions. Right. And 100,000 in the bank. 100,000 in the bank and, another, and two chances to pick up another $900,000. Don't control the 600 at Charlotte. And the Southern 500, the high Southern 500 in Darlington in September. If he can win one of those two, a million dollars. Well, there's Elmo, and he is driving the pace car, and they have just signaled that the next time Elmo will pull off, and we will go back to green. But we do have time to uh, sneak in another commercial break for you before they go to the green flag and settle the winner of the Winston 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. No, I tell you what, Spencer's car landed over there. It did have, I'm sure it been all involved in the storm. Yeah, we had to. We had to. We had to. We had to. They could have been the hook rims up in the tire. Hi there. Whoop, 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 whoop. Where is that coming from? We got it down there. Down there, see? Oh, he comes to the storm. Oh, Brad Hinton. Hi, Brad. Hello, race fans. We join you from Talladega. I'm Bob Jenkins. This is Benny Parsons, and this is Ned Jarrett. Hey there. And we're ready to settle the winner of the Winston 500. They will come around and get the green flag, completing lap number 180 will be on lap number 181, and that means eight more green laps of racing. Davey Allison has the field in tow, and he has reached the point where he can begin accelerating. He does so. Here they come. Let's see what happens. Elliott right behind him, then Earnhardt then Morgan Shepard, and then Sterling Marlin. Those five cars had broken away from the, the lead pack before, from, from the other pack, I should say, before this caution came out. It's Kyle Petty moving up in the middle yeah. of that pack. And Alan Kowicki made a good run there also, getting by Dale Jarrett, so did Kyle Petty, so they picked up several positions. Mostly as they are, everybody trying to get another position. 
Especially right now because the checkered flag is just about in the air. What you do right now, what you did earlier in the race didn't matter so much. What you do now is it means everything. Yeah, you kept yourself in position all day long. Now the chips are down. Seven to go. Riding with Jeff Bodine, Lewis Cam on the Motorcraft Ford. Ahead is Gary Cope. Okay, Ernie Irvin has got himself up there in position now in sixth place. And uh, he's with the lead pack. Six cars have broken away, forming the lead draft with Davey Allison still leading. There's a little bit of race track back to Alan Powicki, but there is Ernie Irvin at the end of this six-car draft. Body man might have to start starting his razor. Dale Jarrett running side by side back there. That's going to hurt them. They're going to lose the draft of that trophy pack. Six more. Six more to go. And Alan Kowicki now is closing in on Ernie Irvin to make it a seven-car lead draft. Really, the top four cars are running nose to tail. Gordon Shepard giving a signal back there to Sterling Marlin. He said, you reckon he's saying, okay, now we're going to go here and lose it. I want you to follow me. Or what kind of was there? I couldn't figure out what he was trying to say. It looked like he was trying to say, let's get in line go on the inside. And they know that they're back fourth and fifth, that they better start pretty soon if they're going to make any headway. And there's Ernie Irvin in sixth place. And Earnhardt finally has a GM friend up there with Ernie. But Ernie can't quite catch no. that group. continues to lead. And Ernie Irvin has caught back up with that back. Yep, he's right there. Knocking on Sterling Marlin's back bumper. There's the pole sitter for this race. About three hours ago, Ernie Irvin let him down for the green flag, and now we're very close to the checkered flag. He let him down for the green flag, but that black 28 that's in front now led the first lap. There's been other late other leaders. Baby Allison led the first lap. And he's trying his best, and okay. here goes Sterling Marlin. He tries on the outside. Yeah, Mark Morgan said, okay, if that's where you want to go, I'll go. Now, they come three wide down through here in complete lap 185. Three more laps to go, and they got three of Chris Oh, and Morgan Shepard almost gets shoved up into the wall, but he saves it. There was some contact. It's all just a little bit of smoke as those two tires, those two cars met. Morgan Shepard drops back to sixth position, but he's lucky that he didn't slide up into the wall. Now the two Chevrolets are together. They are Earnhardt Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin. You can see the tire mark on the side of the sit go forward as Morgan Shepard looks out his front windshield. He has lost the draft that crowd. In fact, he's going to lose some more positions as Alan Fawick and Dale Jarrett back there back in position. Five cars now in the lead draft as they come down to complete lap number 186. Two more laps to go. It's Allison, Elliott, Earnhardt, Irvin, and Marlin. Shepard has dropped all the way back to 10th position. Jerry Punch has a report on pit road. 
The Kodak crew is screaming now at the Goodrich crew. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Tony Glover just ran over. Richard Shoulder said, okay, we're together. We got a shot. Let's take on the force. Let's go. Glover is really excited. He is pumped. It's the best his driver has had a chance to run all afternoon. Huh? They're going to have to make their move quickly, though, guys. Time's running out. Coming down for the white flag. Davey Allison, the white flag, this time by. He's up between three and four. No movement yet on the part of either Earnhardt or Urban, the GM guys that are the two Chevys in this group of cars. Here comes the white flag. One more lap to go. 2.66 miles to go for Davey Allison. And it looks on the outside. Davey. Davey's going to try to take him up. Here comes but... Earnhardt on the inside. Now Bill comes down to the almost touch. They did touch, I believe, but Elliott managed to stay in second and he managed to keep Dale Earnhardt back in third position. Still no movement. They run nose to tail down the back stretch. Let's see what happens now at the end of the back stretch as they set into the 33 degrees of banking of turn number three. Ernie Irvin looking to the inside. There goes Dale Earnhardt to the outside. Ernie will follow him. Dale slides way up on the racetrack. He's in a battle for second position with Bill Elliott. They move off of turn number four and come down through the trioval. Davey Allison still has the lead. He's trying to break the draft. It looks like he's going to win it. Battle for a second between Elliott and Earnhardt. Here's the checkered flag, and Davey Allison wins it. Second place goes to Elliott. Third place to Earnhardt. Fourth, I believe, to Marlon, and fifth to, Ur to Urban. But, boy, it was close. It was close. And Davey Allison, 100000 to bank, two shots to win a million dollars. If he can win the Coca-Cola World 600, or if he can win the Southern 500 in Darlington that will televise for you Labor Day weekend, he will win one. $1 million dollars just like Bill Elliott did back in 1985. Well, let's see if he'll talk to us now. <laughs> Davey Allison, this is Benny Parsons up in ESPN. You read me? Uh, I don't think he can, <laughs> can read this. <laughs> Davey Allison, this is Benny Parsons. You read me? Boy, the crew is happy, aren't they, down there on Kent Road? Davey Allison has won the Winston 500 at Talladega. And that's two in a row. Won the IROC race yesterday and comes back today and wins the Winston 500. Yep, he has won more races than any other driver at Talladega. Now, that includes victories in ARCA. He has many in Winston Cup, in IROC competition. And Davey Allison wins really the one that he wanted to here at Talladega today because he is a step closer to a million dollar bonus. Now see, those cars are stopping and NASCAR is checking the rear spoilers, checking the rear spoilers to make sure that the rear spoilers are set at the right angle. See, right now, you see the official? He's checking, that's Gary Nelson, checking the angle on the rear spoiler to make sure that it's correct. It's okay, Davey Allison can walk. <laughs> and so can Bill Elliott. Wow. An exciting, exciting race here at Talladega today. Davey Allison, who started outside of the front row, comes home the winner of the Winston 500. Well, we'll be back to talk with him in Victory Lane. There you can see the crew members coming out and congratulating Davey on his win here at Talladega. Back in a moment. Got up beside of Bill, it just, it just stopped. That was it. Yeah. Yep. I, I think they waited too late to make their move. Really, I was surprised that they didn't get ready. Okay. <laughs> Don't 
forget Kodak Gold. Uh, <laughs> the NASCAR Winston Cup Winston 500 from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama has been completed. And the winner is Davey Allison. We'll be down to talk to him in just a moment. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Well, the Ford streak continues, and we go to the winner circle for our Kodak Gold Film winner interview. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. And he's not happy at all getting out of that uh, big bright uh, Ford and the cold drink. Davey, congratulations on an outstanding effort. Those last few laps were unbelievable. Thank you, Jerry. You know, uh, yesterday in I Rock, <coughs> excuse me, yesterday in I Rock race, we had to make a move to get back to the front after losing the lead. And today, I, I just felt like I needed to do something a little different than what I did yesterday. And, uh, everything paid off. Texaco Havlin Thunderbird handled great all day. We didn't even make any adjustments at all. Didn't even put tires on the last cost and just filled it up with gas. The car drove great. I gotta gotta thank Robert Yates, Texco Havlin, Larry McReynolds, all the guys on this crew for a great job. And uh, I want to say hi to Chris and Robbie out there. It looked like those last couple laps that uh, you had to realize the crew, I'm sure, told you that the four car had caught the three car, and so it's going to be even out two Fords and two Chevrolets for those final four or five laps. Well, I saw Ernie when he when he caught the pack and or when he made the move and got behind Dale. I knew Sterling was back there, and he was going to disturb him if he could. And, and I just had to hold Bill off and, and preserve the line. Unbelievable weekend for you. I rocked yesterday, Winston Cup, and you just guaranteed yourself 100000 toward that Winston Million. Well, that's a, that's a heavy hit, Jerry, but, you know, I'm shaking right now because this is the first time I've ever won two big races on a single weekend. And, you know, I've never had a Bush Grand National victory, so I haven't been able to back one up with a Winston Cup win. But this is the first time we've won two big races, so I don't know, I don't know how to take it. <laughs> well, he's smiling. He's taking it awfully well here with wife Liz and the rest of the Haviland crew at Victory Lane. Davey Allison wins the Winston 500. Let's go up to the garage area and check in where John Kernan is standing by with Sterling Marlin. John? Sterling did a heck of a job today. He's led a lot of laps and raised a lot of money for a good cause. Yeah, we did. He just told me 97000 for the, the Children's Miracle Network. And, uh, you know, thank Max House for what they paid. And, and uh, you know, I can't say enough about the boys. They built this car. This is a car at Bowdoin wrecked here last year. And they rebuilt it. And uh, it worked perfect. And uh, we just, uh, you know, we should have just put the gas in at last stop against. We just second guess ourselves. So. You know, what are you going to have to do to win one? I mean, you led laps today. You were right there. Well, if, uh, you know, I think the uh, track position, whoever come out uh, right there at the end, I didn't want to sit last caution because, uh, you know, I had a real good car, and I sit back there just riding, and I was waiting on either Morgan or Dale to pull out and make a move and, and bust air, and I could have went on up through there. So uh, we just tried. I like to send them made a move like a couple to go and got the air, you know, stirring up, and uh, we'd have been right up there. Looked like some uh, close quarters racing there those last few laps with the Fords and the Chevys mixing it up. It's a little contact out there. Did you see it? I was in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got under Morgan here trolling, and Ernie got under me, and I don't know if Ernie uh, Morgan knew that uh, Ernie's under me, and uh, I like to turn me in the wall down there and one and two, you home in the right rear, so uh, I don't interrupt and give him a little love. She'll tap back in the back, don't get to do it. <laughs> That's Sterling Marlin. Tell you what, he's going to win one soon, guys. 195 mile an hour love tap? Uh, that's not a love tap. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sterling Marlin ran a great race, and now the uh, huge crowd that gathered here begins to file out after seeing a great race this afternoon. Let's take a look at the way they finished in the Winston 500. Of course, the winner was Davey, Alli uh, Davey Allison, rather, his third win of the 92 season and his 16th career NASCAR Winston Cup victory. Elliott was second, Earnhardt, then Marlin and Irvin. But boy, those cars came down side by side and nose to tail. Six through ten was Colwicky, Jarrett, Martin, Morgan, Shepard, and tenth was Kyle Petty. Eleventh through fifteenth, Rusty Wallace, Dick Trickle, Derek Colt, Jeff Bodine, and Wally Dottenbach. Good run for the rookie. Richard Petty was sixteenth. Good run for the king, Brett Bodine, Rick Mass, Dave Mater, and Bobby Hamilton, twentieth. And those, those cars were in the lead lap. 21st was Ted Musgrave. Hutt Strickland was 22nd. Ken Schrader, 23rd. Harry Gant back in 24th. Jimmy Hensley, 25th. And 26 through 30th were Rudd, Marcus, Hillen, Darrell Waltrip, and Bob Shack. And then 31st through 35th in today's event, Buddy Baker, Jimmy Spencer, who had that exciting ride down the backstretch. The car nearly flipped over, but didn't. 
Then uh, Stanley Smith, Jimmy Means, and Greg Sachs. Then finishing 36 through 40, Terry Labonte. He didn't have a very good debut in the Ford. Charlie Glotzbach crashed, wasn't injured. And the others that finished in the Winston 500 today here at Talladega. Back with more after this. Oh, my, my good buddy, Jay Randolph. All right. Boy, now look. Wow, you are rich. <laughs> mm. Thanks, uh -oh. Mike. You're pretty close. You know what? A little more encouragement, and you got that accomplished. We'll find it. Yep. The celebration in Victory Lane at the Winston 500 in Talladega is for Davey Allison, who won here today, but Ernie Irvin, who started from the pole position, wound up in fifth. And Jerry Punch is with him. You may not recognize this guy without his mustache, but believe me, it is Ernie Irvin. And Ernie Irvin, uh, smiling, managing a smile. Ernie, a struggle of a day, but those last few laps, pretty exciting. It was a lot of fun, Jerry. You know, uh, you know, we got a lot to smile about. It's our first top ten all year, and a car come home in one piece. We can take it to Daytona now. And, and I learned a lot, got a lot more confidence back in drafting and things like that. And uh, really looking forward to going to Daytona. But, you know, we had a good race car today and was fortunate enough to come on where we did. When you caught that lead draft, your, your crew chief, Tony Glover, was doing jumping jacks. He ran over Richard Childress and said, come on, let's go. Chevrolet's go, go, go. He was waving his hand like a cheerleader. And you and Earnhardt, I guess, had communicated to hook up and try to make a move to handle the Fords. Well, Richard went over and him and Tony talked about it. And Dale uh, told Tony, he says, uh, he says, tell him to go whatever way. We're going to go whatever way they don't go. So uh, I knew pretty much what that meant. And when they stayed low, he went high, and I tried to go with him. And, uh, you know, we made, we gave it a good shot. But, uh, you know, my Kodak car and his good wrench car just weren't quite strong enough to get up there. Ernie Irvin coming home with a good fifth-place finish after struggling early in the afternoon. Bob? Ernie Irvin finishing in fifth position. And there is, in, again, victory lane where Davey Allison is uh, receiving the accolades. Did Ernie look weird without that mustache? Yeah, he does. <laughs> that whole group, you would hardly recognize them. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, the uh, Las Vegas Senior Classic is coming up here on ESPN Next. Now, we're going to uh, come back here in just a few minutes and wrap up everything that happened uh, here this afternoon. But let's get an update on what's happening out there in Las Vegas and the Senior Classic coming up next. Let's go to the Desert Inn Country Club and Jay Randolph. Jay? Hey, Jerry or John, uh, if anybody sees Kyle Petty, ask him if he made any contact with that 16 car. During the Spencer deal. During the Spencer deal. And it looked like that he just, you know, ran up behind the 16 and just tapped yeah, Of course him. he can't get a shot, but Bill, Bill, Bill can't. Bill is uh, sitting here with the, I know, but I, I can just talk to him. He, he's got, he burned his back, and so he's sitting here there putting some compresses on his back. We can talk to Bill. I know that's cold, but that's what you got to do to take the heat out good, of it. It's just, it's just like a piece of steak when you put it in the oven and take it out. It just keeps cooking. If you leave it up on the counter, you got to take the heat out of it. 
That's a good analogy. Who's already gone? Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Well, maybe. Here, Corky said. There. Okay. Son, if you want. He probably wasn't no better than myself at 22. John, did you hear? I've got Wally. John, did you hear? Okay, you seen Kyle Petty down there anywhere? No, but I got Wally Dahl back. Okay, ask him if he did. He say he got bumped. Yeah, he got. He, yeah, Benny, he got bumped. Okay, good. <laughs> Probably we come back. I could get Bill to stand. I said he did. I just my, my wanted Mike to verify Barry, that that's. Here's Joe. I you want to save these, Lenny? My Mike Matthews. Uh, Mike, it may. You're pretty hissy, uh, John. How about if I move out here? How's this? That's better. Okay, well, a little better. Where, I don't know where Joe went. I don't know where Iker went. Okay, go to break right away. Okay. Who's leading the golf tournament? Besides Some guy, you know, this guy named Chai Chai. Chai Chai, Roger, <laughs> Roger Greaser. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. He went last year. I like to go to Chi Chi's restaurants and eat. <laughs> Hello, one two one two. We're okay. Hello, we got it. We get closer to getting back. How's this? I'll get Bill. See if he'll walk better. Two steps. Hello, one two one two. How is this? Is this better? Hello. Not much, John. You're still pretty bad. Well, I can't help it. Well, I know you can't. Well, what are we going to do? Punt. Go home, I guess. All right, well, I'll... No. <laughs> we'll try it out the... All right. Yeah, right. Pam, if you'll tell me when we're probably 15 seconds out, I'll see if Bill stand up. Okay. Taking it from Jay. Okay. Wait a second. Oh, my. All right. It's not going to be long enough. Well, you don't have all cameras in the ISO. Trevino, okay. All right, we got a camera mic here, Pam. I use the shot. They know it's a camera mic, right? <laughs> All right, we'll go back to Las Vegas for final round coverage in just a few minutes. But uh, first, we're going to recap what happened here this afternoon at Talladega. It was a win for Davy Allison. There's a party going on right down there in the middle of that bunch. There's a party going on. A huge party. John Kernan is down in the garage area with Wally Dahlenbach. Well, Bob, Wally Dahlenbach, a lot better finish than last year. 14th place, although with a little bit of uh, some tough racing out there. Yeah, I don't think there's too many guys I'll be taking a dinner tonight. Uh, it was tough. Nobody was really working with us today. But everything we got today we earned. We had good pit stops and gave a good ride for Keystone and Planters, and we're real happy with it. You know, you told me earlier this year just how tough it was and how much you were learning. What have you learned, the most important thing this year? I learned, I think I have to be here a little while before some of these guys start running with me. We had a real strong car, but it, like I said, you just got to have guys working. And, and it wasn't just me. I mean, man, as soon as somebody pulled out, that was it. You know, they, and they'd go to the back. And, uh, but we learned a lot. We, we got through it in one piece, and uh, we go on from here. That's Wally Dahlen back after a fine 14th place finish. Let's go across the garage area to Jerry Punch. Well, John, Bill Elliott just sitting here in the back of the Budweiser. First of all, Bill, let me ask how you are. I know you burned your back. Looks to be mostly first-degree burns. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, you know, the car, the seat got real hot before, you know, we run so long under green air, and I told Junior, I said, the first stop, somebody sprayed me down with water. And I've had this situation happen before, you know, and your body just gets so hot, you just start getting sick inside. And I started feeling real bad, and I told them if they'd spray me down and just pack ice in my in my lap here, you know, to where it just cool the seat off around me, because you know, with with me in the car, I'm so long legged and so tall, I got to move the seat back and down, and that gets it on the floor and against the roll cage. All that stuff does is just radiate heat.
back in me and then you end up uh, sitting in a frying pan basically and you know i've been in this situation before like in in the mailing cars and uh, i don't much like it but you know you got to live with it well, after a good run, a medium rare Bill Elliott here at Talladega, having a good effort here and a good finish here in the Budweiser Ford Thunderbird. We'll be back with more from Talladega Super Speedway after this. Stay with us. That was Sterling Marlin walking out of Victor Lane after his Gillette halfway $10,000 presentation. Oh. They have to go to Victor Lane to get it now. They got to go to Victor Lane to get it. Hmm. Did Darrell get it at Martinsville? Because he didn't show up. If you don't, you don't get it? They, they might have just put that in here recently, I think. Hmm. Now the deal is if you don't go, you don't get it. Hmm. Okay. Points will be first. David didn't hurt himself today, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he probably led the most laps. And mm -hmm. yeah, Gant had trouble, so he pulled away from him. Okay. Davey Allison celebrating victory here at Talladega. And as we take a look at the quest for the cup standings, obviously with the win, Davey Allison will remain in front. But look at this. Bill Elliott moves all the way to second position now in points. Harry Gant third, followed by Alan Kowicki and Morgan Shepard moves into fifth position in the points. So it remains a very, very tight quest for the cup championship. Earnhardt, Labonte, Bodine, Martin, and Trickle, the second 10 in the points, or second five, I should say, in the points. Now, as far as the order of rundown here today, Allison, Elliott, Earnhardt, Marlin, and Irvin, sixth position through 10, Colwicky, Jarrett, Martin, Shepard, and Petty. Well, our next Winston Cup race will be on Sunday, June the 7th, live at 4 o'clock at Sonoma, California, at Sears Point International Raceway, where the defending champion is the guy that won today, Davey Allison. Don't forget Sunday Night Baseball tonight, the Pirates, and Houston at 8 o'clock. For now, for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch, this is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone. Good job, Bob. Thanks, Benny. Thanks. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, guys. Good yeah, picture, thank you, Mikey. Bud. Good pictures. All right, Mr. Langner, thank you. Did a good job, Terry. See you later.